and away we go. Oh, All right, wow. fellas, we got a great show for you tonight. We got a mystery guest here. Listen, <laughs> if leave, I'm shot. telling you now, leave your little hurt feelings at home for this one. All right, bro? For all you little millennials in a safe space, go find your safe space. <laughs> turn it off. This is going to be ruckus, bro. Ruckus. Yeah, Can you describe have, the ruckus? Uh, I have some. Uh, I have some intro music for our guest as you intro him. Are you ready for this? Uh, yeah, go. All right, boys. They're gonna play. Guess who the guest is? Are you there, guest? I'm gonna ask you questions. I'm gonna figure out who you are. Okay. Well, were you one time known as Maury? Yes. Wow. <laughs> hey. Uh, hey guys, we got Mike in <laughs> Mikey Fildor. <laughs> what is that? A a a what do you got? A robot? on? AKA yeah, Maury. Yes. <laughs> AKA uh, Mike J the Jericho Jew. AKA <laughs> what else you got? There's a couple more. Well, I started up as mop head in the volleys because I had a head down on my shoulders. Yeah, the perm. And then when I went to the Bronx, there's a story about it. I became electric head because I had a more than just an afro. I had uh, a. a Electrical incident that I want to explain. Okay. And then when I went to uh, Rescue 4, I became Murray because uh, John Gagliano, who Thanks. went to Hazmat eventually, God rest his soul, uh, said, You're from Jericho, you're a Jew, you're Murray. So every time you get a housewife calling, I'm like, Hey, Murray, I, I know it was me. Uh, I didn't have to say Mike, it was Murray. What's going on, Mike? What's going on? Listen, first of all, I'd like to thank Did you even Mike. know how these people live? I'd like to thank Mike for combing his hair tonight. Um, <laughs> with a with firecracker. The, with a firecracker. Thank you, Mike. You're Mike's welcome. coming in hot with a robe on. I don't know if he's uh, like a Hugh Hefner or if he just got back from from uh, getting uh, his prostate checked. I don't know what he's uh, anyway, no, uh, doing. You know. <laughs> we love you a long time. Thanks for dressing up and combing your hair, Mike. I appreciate it. Listen, it's an honor to be on the show. Uh, you know, I, I'm from the old school, so there's two shows that remind me of, of your show. One, the Johnny Carson show, and something called uh, Who Do You Trust? Not Who You Trust, uh, You Bet Your Life with Groucho. Bet Your Life. I love because it. Because you have the thing famous word. And in those days, they had a, he had a duck come down, Groucho Marx, and it had a word. That's and right. He got, he got money. Right. And in those days, 50 bucks or 100 bucks in the 50s. You, you were going to Vegas for a month. Yeah, yeah, right. And, uh, with the Johnny Carson, Louis reminds me of Carson a little bit. He's like the running the show. You're more like Kevin, more like Dean Martin. Right. You know, a couple of steps and you get funnier and funnier. I'm smooth. <laughs> and then we have Pete, who's more like Ed McMahon. He's a round <laughs> ball, 20 to a square hole. And it's not easy. I I do I I Ed Boucher. So it's great. Mr. Mr. Kevin, would you please bring us in uh, with the void Pete, of the day? What is the word of the day, Pete? The word of the day, ladies and gentlemen, is boy. You're not going to be able to feel your face in like 10 minutes. All right, so Mike's drinking a little martini there, like the yeah. gentleman, like a James Bond type, like a Dean Martin type of guy, bro, like you are. Dean Martin, uh, uh, Sean Connery, because he really started the vodka movement in, in, in the martini. It used to be gin, and right. he wanted it with vodka, and that started a, a whole world of vodka martinis. Martinis. And what vodka did you use, bro? Today was Tito's. I also like oh. Deep River from Texas. I know. This guy right here, bro? Oi, oi! Oh, wow, nice. Hi, we're going to get shit faced when I tell the rabbi. Listen, What's going on, oi, We're drinking here, we're kibitzing, we're getting a little cafe. We're telling stories. I'll tell you a funny story. When I asked my 
uh, future wife's parents for her, her hand. You know, you know, you get a little on the collar, you get a little starch. A clumped, little right clumped. <laughs> yeah, I was a little worried, you know, because I, oh, there, there's, a two, there's two parts to that story. Oh. One, when I did ask for her hand, oh, you want to stay for dinner, Mike? I said, what are you going to have? So I figured it was, you know, more of a Jewish type of meal. Yeah. They had pork chops on the grill. So I knew right away I was, <laughs> no problem. It was good. Very so good. So my, my wife tells me you're Jewish. Yes, only the good half. half. Only the good half. Uh, you're well, half a Jewish. The good half downstairs works very well. Let me put it. Oh, all right. So, oh, you're going that way. You're not going. Yeah, this I'm going, way. You're going that there way. Is nothing right. there. Yeah, yeah. Hard. There's a lot of air. <laughs> you know. Now I'll tell you a quick story about my ex-wife when I was kind of dating her stealthily. Wait, let me say, how many ex-wives do you have? Only one. Okay, I got your beat. Now, Go ahead. Go. And you got to understand something. I have another story later on about age. I'm 19 years older than my, my ex-wife. Nice. Good for you. Good for so, you. <laughs> you know, I always heard Rob in the cradle. So my future in-laws were not happy with me because he's an older guy. Their daughter's very young. And, you know, he's a, he's a blue-collar guy. So one day she had an auto accident. So she's at uh, Manhasset Lakeville at the uh, uh, hospital in North Shore. And uh, Howard's there, her father. Uh, her mother's there, Royce. And... Uh, uh, Howard's brother, okay, he's there, and his brother was a is a detective at the. He still was a detective in New York City. Yeah. So somehow they got in the conversation, and he goes, "You know what, Howie? That's a good catch. Pension, unlimited sick leave, <laughs> and after that they love it." That's so they so heard the word money, pension. It's all about money. <laughs> Howard said hey, to me, "Come on, everyone, love you." Hey. So that's my story about. Uh, hey. 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 That Guess who John, walked in the room? John Walters. Listen. Oh, great. All right, Mike. Let's get to the fire. I know. Mazel tough. Guys, you're here for the fire stuff. So, yeah. what year did you get on, brother? Okay, I got on in 1977. Now, there was a five year wait. Uh, I took the test in 71 because uh, my girlfriend's at the time, husband, father was a CPA. And normally, if he said, you know what, Mike, you know what's going to happen economically, back it up with a civil service test. So I happened to be a volley in Jericho. Uh, there was one guy, Gene Marmon, uh, who, you know, he's a strange character, but he was very pro uh, FDNY. And I, I would say over the years, there's been 20 guys that have joined the uh, uh, city fire department because of his uh, thought process. So uh, I waited a long time. And then uh, I'm living out in uh, Centerpool, okay, North Point. On, off of 25A. That's on the North Shore of Long Island. So I got a call about two days earlier on a Friday. You're in on Monday. This is after five years. And this is with the three to one rule, mm -hmm. which Judge Stockton said that, well, for every three white guys, we had to hire a minority. Okay, there's another story about that too. So anyhow, I was blessed. I got on. That was great. So uh, needless to say, I had a fix it again, Tony Fiat 124 Spider. Beautiful red car. Carmel leather interior, black top. <laughs> Real, oh, ghetto. Real ghetto car. <laughs> well, you know, once again, Fiat was known for their breakdowns. So on the way to get to the rock, mm -hmm. it breaks down in center point. Oh, for swearing God. in, you mean? For being sworn in? Now, and, yeah, in those, yeah, in those days, you know, there's, no, there's only pay phones. Right. So if you didn't have quarters, you're out of luck. I have plenty of quarters. So I called my friend Dave. I said, Dave. This is Mike. I'm, I'm, I'm stuck in center point, not center reach. Okay, Mike, I got you. I'll be there. <laughs> well, sure enough, 45 oh minutes, God. an hour passes by. He never showed up, and I found out later, yeah, he went to center reach. Right. Oh, my God. Which is not even close. Oh, my so gosh. I knew uh, – I called my mom. She picked me up. I dropped her off. When I got dropped my mom off, I called a friend of mine, Dave, another Dave, who's much more reliable in that uh, portion of my life. And I said, Dave, I'm going to be late for public school. All right, Mike, I know Chief Casabury. I'll give him a bus. So call Chief he was, a very, he was a very nice guy. He's called oh, the bear. Right? I just met his daughter-in-law the other day. He's still yeah. around. Yeah. Out in Suffolk. So anyhow, so I felt I had it under control. So, you know, in the old days when you get to the rock, uh, you had, well, besides wearing canary yellow, there was a bluestone parking lot for us whale ships. And if you don't know what a whale ship is, 
you're, you're you're less than a pro, but you're less than you. <laughs> you know, you're, just, you're there uh, at, at the rim of the of the old god times. You know, jump, you jump. How high? Five feet. You jump ten. So I'm going across the blue stone driveway to get to the stands where they're announcing my name, Michael. Oh Miller. my God, are you shitting? And I'm going. Oh, <laughs> <I'm here." laughs> yeah. I probably should have said nothing, but I, you know, so. It kind of put me in the wrong steps with a lot of guys. There was this guy, Chief Tarzio, who had to be out at 90. He used to be in those white cylinders. Mm. He had, had his field glasses, and he'd be watching. Oh, he's horrible. He's a turret. He's a turret. So, you know, I, I got caught a couple times with long hair, brown shoes, the wrong shirt. Then I didn't do it on purpose. Believe me, guys, that was not my intention. But when you come from the lily white suburbs, mm. you have a, a drill sergeant telling you what to do. You're going like, what the fuck is this guy? You know, yeah. I never got yelled at by my dad like that. So anyway, one thing led to another. Uh, I did do some good things there when I had it. Uh, they had the uh, towel ladder training. I had been a volley, so I knew how to use the towel ladder three ways on the on the joystick. I could go up and down, left, right, and, and sideways, and and uh, uh, ex uh, extending the track. Uh, right. The mm -hmm. track. So the black lieutenant loved me. I written a show for the next couple of weeks. He had me doing the teaching. Hey, Mike, why are you whispering? Why are you whispering? The black. It's just a natural reaction. I'm sorry. <laughs> he was going to do this. Wait. Yeah. No. So he was a black guy, <laughs> and he let me run the show. So Ain't nobody got time for that. So it was great, and, and but I guess the higher ups didn't like my act, and I can't prove it. But they were sending a lot of guys to Queens. Well, they sent me to the, the best place you can send a knucklehead, 50 engine, 19 truck. So I went up to Division Six. They appreciated my humor. Mm -hmm. I did some artwork. Uh, I was a little uh, uh, stir crazy, harebrained, uh, messed up. But they loved I fit right in with most of the guys. So that's my start as a probe. Let me ask you one question from that whole story. When you had to use the payphone, was it like a quarter that you had from your bar mitzvah that you actually put in that you still <laughs> oh, hey. Uh, hey, hey, no, hey. What's going on, Michael? That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a family secret. Right there. Listen to me. You got a drink when he hits the thing, bro. Oh, okay. Mike, yeah. <laughs> now you know why I was in the All right. Wait, so what year was that? Minute. 77, you said? 77. I caught the tail end of the war years. The war years. In the Bronx. Did you start out in the engine you went to the, right to the truck? Start off the engine. Uh, uh, I was corrupted by the guys in the truck who were hanging out in the pit, which, you know, that's another story. That's yes. Story. Allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, that's a, yeah, allegedly down in the pit. And it, it was great. We had Division 6 upstairs. And the, the Chiefs all love this. Nemesek, especially Galchis. There was a lot of great Chiefs that particularly didn't like the battalion. That's too much, you know, because they would come in here and like uh, assert their uh, assert their authority. Hey, you got a sneakers on? Well, you know, I was once on house watching Divine or someone from uh, the the Seventeenth uh, Battalion. They were with forty four ninety two. Mm -hmm. I think the towel ladder and the engine. And, and uh, so they would he would come in there. I guess they'd go upstairs to get the mailbag. In those days, you had a mailbag. Yeah, right. I think work. they still have that. They still, oh, really? That's that's an. That's, I'm glad they had, they kept the some traditions. So anyhow, I remember one time being on a house watch, and I'm you know I was in fifth the engine. I got my legs on the on the on the table, like this. Were you, you a probie? Yeah, you know, watching the rabbit ear TV. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's a round tube, not even a square tube yet. And uh, I think it was Snyder walks in. Hey, you're out of uniform. Okay, chief. Yeah. Uh, but but the the, the the chief. I don't want to hear about the chief. Change your shoes. Well, I didn't change my shoes. I didn't change my shoes. Because as he finished that remark about the sneakers, guess who walks downstairs? The chief. The chief with the sneakers on. Sneakers on. <laughs> because he had a racket ball. Board. So he shut right up. But, you know, some of these old bosses, they just don't get it. They, they really don't get the, what it is, the charisma of certain companies. Right. You know, it's like a, you, know, you always like that wild girl for a, a wife or a girlfriend, and you really can't get her. They can't get the concept that, guess what? You're not going to. Corral 50 engine 19 truck. It ain't happening. Right. So yeah. how long did you put in the engine, Mike, before you went to the truck? Uh three years. And then I went over to the truck. That's a good amount of time, right? You put some good work. Yeah, I did three and four. Yeah. It was good. <laughs> I had, you know, Maya Jack was there from the rock. 
Oh, oh nice. Wow. He was there for yeah. me at the Pro yeah. School. He was there. Great at guy. Uh, I, I had the uh, opportunity to work with Jim Corcoran, who was the uh, started the uh, uh, band. Bird Center, right? No, the band. Oh, the band. Yeah. Right, 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 right. The band. Jim Corcoran. He had to be about six. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So he started the band, and with uh, I forgot the other gentleman's name. And so I, I knew a couple of what I thought were really like these are classic Heavy hitters. Uh, her her herorism type guys that you know you look up to. Right. So I, you know, I had Tom Martin, Tony Alva, uh, Ed Corn, where he, he we were in the engine. We had to take the satchel packs upstairs with the red box with the, the reducer to go up on the, the Webster projects. And he was always screwing it up. So we always just tell him, Ed, wait till the truck comes in and we'll all go up together, force the door, and we'll get going. He never listened. He always had to go up first without us. So one day we're in the Webster Avenue uh, lobby. Uh, and these uh, uh, elevators weren't the best. So he gets in and takes off. It goes up to, I guess, the 14th floor, whatever it was. Uh, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're pressing the button. Up his head. Finally, it comes out. All of a sudden, this huge wall of smoke comes out into the lobby. And on his hands and knees with the flashlight, I think he's just on the fire floor, it was Lieutenant Ed Corn. <laughs> and you know, we just said, Ed, you know, and, you know, he just, you know, and he's Jewish, no less. So there you go. It, it doesn't tell you how. Oy. 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 Hold on. You did not bring him out with that. Oh, him? I'm Chief Steve. I'm here to check your socks. If your OT is high, I'll send you to the rock. Mustache trimmed and tight to your face. No, who you're talking to. Don't step out of place, because I'm Chief. Steve! <laughs> oh man, that guy had no sense of humor. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. What would, what would Mike, Chief don't Steve sugarcoat it. Don't sugarcoat it. Uh, uh, you would, uh, listen, you would be wearing sneakers. All business. All you would business. be wearing sneakers if you uh, if you're on a housewife with Chief Steve around, bro. Oh, he was tough, Chief Steve. Yeah. Yeah, man. All right, so listen, how long are you in, in 19 truck down? Well, then what happened with my volley experience with, with taking hazmat courses and yeah. rescue four. Now, I hate to say this, gentlemen. They were hazmat, hazmat ones yeah. in FDMY. I'm an original member. So suck it. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Tell you that. So all what the ones like Phil DeCardo and uh, all the jokesters. and uh, Daddy all Phil? Of, suck I was it. Like, I'm suck number it. one. They're first. So anyhow uh, – when I got to uh, got there, I had met a couple Wait of guys. This guy, Ron Gore. That, Wait a minute. How many years yeah. did you do in the truck first? In, in 19? About four years. So you got Total seven, seven. Seven years. And then I flipped. You flipped over to the dark side. Exactly. Yeah, I did. Okay. Well, you know what? I, I, I had had my course with the volleys. I had met Dylan a couple of times at uh, Division Six showing off our the hazmat equipment. And I knew some of the guys from courses in Florida. And they, one day they just said, Mike, come on over. You guys. I said, hey, we got nothing to lose. Who, so, was, who um, was the captain in Rescue 4 then? Uh, Norman Meehan, who uh, I think in a way regretted he took me in the beginning because at the time, remember the, you don't remember the PMLA program. It was uh, guys that abused the sick leave. But when you're yeah, in the yeah Bronx, they still have it. They still oh, yeah. have it. Well, in the Bronx, we were big on you go out every once in a while so we can make money. Correct. It's uh, your right turn to tonight, Milner. You're going. <laughs> Create overtime. I've been threatened before. Uh, so anyhow, so I, I got I got on an onion skin, and then just before the orders came out, he must have known the orders were coming down. He, uh, Norman Meehan brings me upstairs. Now, he had to be about 6'6". Six, six. Big, tall guy. No sense of humor at all. He never laughed in his life. He goes, hey, Mike, can I ask you a question? How come you didn't tell me about the PMLA program? You know, I would not have taken it. I said, well, Chief, Want an honest answer? Yes, I do, Mike. You never asked me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. And he was gone. He, he left. He was. He became a battalion chief. So, yeah, so what year? What year was that when you got there? So if due to man, I got there in like June of eighty three. Eighty three. Wow. Right. Yeah. That's incredible, man. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. And then do you. Uh, Tell, tell me some of, I know that we had discussed uh, on the phone when we were talking, some of the jobs, obviously the one uh, with uh, Tommy Williams, uh, that comes to mind. Obviously, guys would probably want to hear that. I want to hear that because I didn't. Yeah, uh, it was uh, interesting. Uh, 
it was on Grand Avenue. It was a, uh, uh, I think about four stories high. The first story was a furniture store. Above it were these showcase windows, which were about six to seven feet high with a sill. So remember the sill part. So we got the alarm. We're going up there. Now, Rob Weedman, who was in Rescue 2. Right. Who got burned. Yes. He was, a, he was a buff that night. Is that right? Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah. He was a buff that night. So on the way up there, a couple of us are going, and I'm not going to mention the company's name, but we said, you know what? Watch out for this truck company. Okay. Put that in the back of your skull, just like anybody else going on to a job. You know your companies. You know what you got when you get there, and you, you, you act accordingly. So we get there, and it was roaring pretty good, mostly smoke at the time, a little a fire on the roof. So uh, I was always Tommy's irons guy. So we're going up the stairs, and I said, listen, uh, Tom, I see smoke coming up through the treads. Yeah, I see it too, Mike. Okay, let's get going. I said, no problem. We get upstairs. We start doing a search. We ended up in a vacant, uh, I guess a show showcase area where they must have shown stuff, but it had – uh, walls coming out with bookcases uh, horizontally to the wall. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, vertically, however you want. So I got you. I know what you mean. Yeah. And we were doing this, and it was getting progressively higher and darker. And uh, I, I don't get scared. Uh, but when it finally came to a point where Tommy and I separated, said, you go find that window. And I couldn't see the window. And after the fact, when they showed me the safety photos, you could see me viciously winging my halligan against the wall, which was a heavy duty uh, uh, blaster, till I found the window. And I broke the window and a rush of air came because the wind was blowing some of the south into the building. So it, it, I don't think it really helped out a lot. I think it might have made it worse. Mm -hmm. I don't know what really happened. All I remember is Tommy was not near me and he gave a maid day. Mike. He said, hey, Mike, find that window. We had to get the fuck out of here. So once he said the word fuck, I knew. Yeah, yeah, I got you. You know, there's a lot of curse words you use, but some of them. I got you. Yeah. Fuck from Tommy Williams was, I never heard it before. So uh, I found the window. I broke it. And all I remember is I gave a second May Day. I couldn't see really out the window. But I did remember telling Larry Hatton, the safety chief at the time. I, chief. I remember a, a shadow going by me. Now, I can't tell you that was Tom Williams, uh, but he was at the bottom. He had cracked his skull. Selma Phillips' skull cracked on the uh, curb. Uh, I finally let go like a cat on the sill. Fell, fell on my back, and then there you go. I, you know, I was doing my best to help out. I mean, you can tell by my face this was not something you ever think of. Dude, that's the real. That's a real deal. When you that's sent me that picture, I mean, that that's just. Uh, I didn't even realize who that was. I, Louis, you know what it is. Uh, I I I kept it because uh, it, it reminds me how lucky I was to become a city fireman. How lucky I was to work with the best, especially the gentleman that was dying there, Lieutenant Williams. Yeah, man. And the guys and uh, I had a. I was doing crazy things before I became a city fireman, but it was just like uh, 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 a good luck charm came in. I took the test. I got on the job, and these guys liked me. They looked for me for leadership. They looked for me for advice. They knew I was the go-to guy when it came to certain situations. So I keep this photo because I want everyone to know, and I hope everyone watching tonight, this, this is not what you want to happen at, on any, not even your worst day. Yeah, and, and uh, that's a picture of terror. Uh, Mike. If you wouldn't mind, just can you describe what's going on in the photo for our audio listeners who may be listening to this tomorrow on the uh, on speaker or whatever? Yeah, that's me, as you can see, and then on the ground with his legs crossed is, is Tom Williams, and they had a paramedic. Eventually, came to work on him, and these are the engine guy. I don't know who engine was working on, but that time I had no clue what I was doing. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Never, I'm sure. You know, I, I helped work on him. I helped. They intubated him. He had cracked his skull. And I know the paramedic told me, Mike, there's air coming out. This doesn't look good. Uh, and so and I, you, ju I don't know if you said it. Did you say you jumped out, out the window too? Did you say that? Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't hear you say So, that. what are you doing? You were hanging on to the sill, Mike? You went over. I held on to the sill for a while. And yeah. Then finally, someone said, Mike, let go. You got to let go. 
So I let go. I fell about maybe 20 feet. I don't want to exaggerate. And you didn't break a leg or an ankle no, or I, nothing? I, no, I was Your adrenaline was probably through the roof, man. Yeah, I fell on my back of my Scott pack, took it off, and I started that. You know, actually, when I landed, I fell this way, and I looked right in his face. Oh. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, holy shit! So, right, you know, it's not what you want to do. I actually, uh, I looked up the the uh, the, the uh, fatality report from the FDNY for that, and you know they were just saying that it was all head trauma. He landed, you know, he went down head first, and yep. uh, you know they don't give a reason. You know, there's a couple things that they presume could have happened. Uh, they don't think he tripped out. They don't think of this. You know, similar to what you said, which was it was kind of a blur, and next thing you know, he was outside. Yeah. Um, but I, I think uh, what, what I wanted to say real quick. When I got to 117 in May of 93, my friend, when I was a probie, there was my lieutenant was Bill Urban, 108 guy, there a long time. Uh, and uh, he had a picture over his locker of Tommy Williams. And I didn't know who he was. You know, obviously, I didn't know who he was. I was a probie. And I remember him when he explained to me who that was, how much passion, you know, think about that. You know, you know how it is in the fire department. We don't really think about these things. So the fact that he had his picture, above his locker for years it was there you know the whole right. time i was there so right. uh, he obviously kept him in in high esteem you know what i mean so yeah. uh i was in with 216 and 108 uh and we got a lot of guys harry ford and a few others right. harry ford is another one right uh, uh, uh yeah so a lot of guys came from 216 and 108 too for before i even got there and then afterwards as well but you know it, it just was a tough day uh I'll, I'll give you some other stuff that was was involved with that. When we got to uh, Elmhurst General, uh, believe it or not, the first line of duty death for Michael Judge was Tom Williams. Is that right? Uh, yeah. 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 And uh, uh, what time did that box come in, Mike? That was an early I mean, morning box. You no, know, it was like nine thirty, ten o'clock at night. Okay. It wasn't that late. I think we just had finished dinner. Right. You know so. Uh, that's that's, that's, a, that's that. a close box for you guys, man, for rescue. It four. was pretty close. We got there pretty quick. You're right. Well, it's actually, Mike, yeah. it's 11 o'clock, 2304. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry for being off, but I, no, I, know it was, I know it wasn't late, early in the morning. Yeah, yeah. And that's actually a dead spot, believe it or not. I mean, the closest truck is probably 136 coming down Grand Avenue. So you right. guys are probably like second dude truck in there, man, at least. Yeah, yeah you guys could be first dude there. Yeah. You could probably get <laughs> yeah. there first dude. Oh, they'd have to pass for going up the hill and making it <clears throat> Or a ride. I don't know which. Uh, once you get to the expressway, and we're there. Yeah, Kev, that's right. right. That's right on the corner of the of the highway. It's right it's there. Yeah, on the right. Corner. You yeah. could see the build. You can right. almost see the building from two eighty eight quarters, bro. Yeah. Right. Right. Yep. That's so, like part. I said, you know, I hope the people that are watching, and not so much for the, but it doesn't matter if you're volunteer or, or paid. It, it's just that these things can happen, and uh, it's it's not anything you can prepare for mentally for a while because it's not normal and uh, there's no book on it and uh it doesn't matter how much time you have it doesn't matter no, it, it, it does matter. it hurt it still hurts me today yeah i believe it you know it really does uh so, all right wait, let's uh let's yeah, move on not to be melancholy don't get me wrong yeah yeah let's move on i mean listen, I you, you know what i said here's the lieutenant williams oi oi oi, oi. oi. Great <laughs> All right, so let's talk about making grabs now. Oh, I uh, wasn't his uh, nickname Mikey Grabs? Mikey Grabs? No. Murray Grabs. Murray oh, Grabs. Murray, oh, hey, no Murray Grabs. Murray Grabs. Oh, hey, oh, hey. I made Murray a lot Grabs. of things, but they weren't fire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Listen, I, 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 wasn't, I, I wasn't involved with a lot of big grabs. I mean, I helped a lot, uh, <clears> but, you know, I, I, I was with the 50-50 uh the tom williams uh the the uh water to, uh shaft job in, in mad smith uh you i did a father's I, day I fire? Like, what's that you were in the father's day fire oh yeah oh yeah that, yeah i'm sorry yeah i was there was no grabs there except grabbing my helmet when i hit the ceiling and fell out other than that i, I worked that job too mikey oh did you i mean that was another day yeah yeah everything is crazy you know, all i remember is making a u-turn going to a box in Bro the bronx you guys were coming back over the bridge when that came in. Yeah, we got there quick. Yeah. Got there quick. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I, you know, it's, it, it, I, I kind of like now I don't want to laugh too much, but, uh, 
you know, that's the time when it happens multiple times to the same idiot, you know, you got to say to yourself, there's the a reason you're here. Going? Yeah. You know, why am I here? I mean, there, there is, a, that's how I live. I agree. Right. The guy upstairs, uh, whatever his name is, maybe it is Murray. Said, hey, Mike, <laughs> he's a Jew. Oh, shit. He's I a Jew. Jew. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. I believe he's looking out for the Jews. I believe his name was Jesus. You know, I, it, it, I, it, it's just that, uh, you know, after a while, I mean, a couple guys at work would say, call me up. Mike, were you there? Thinking I was at every time there was a problem. Yeah. You know, only because the big bulk, the big ones, I was there. Uh, you know, Mike, how, the, uh, Father, the Father's Day fire, we were doing everything textbook. We had the line to the top of the stairs. We were doing everything by the book. And like you said, shit happens yeah. fast, man. And it just, yeah. you had a fire, it's unpredictable. And yeah. uh, I was standing, I was stare at the top of the stairs with Brian Fahey. And depending on which way, you know, like you said, yes. wh wh whatever way you rolled or whatever it was, either you lived yeah. or you died. That was it. And that's what happened with Brian. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and then the sad part of that is, uh, you know, we were, the, he gave a couple of a May Day and once or twice, and we talked to him for, for yeah. a period yep. of time. Yeah, uh, horrible. And, and that was worse than not hearing anything. Yeah, I yep. agree. You know, I, I, now you see, you got your adrenaline's going, Brian, we're going to get you. And, and we didn't get him. No. Yeah, it's horrible. He kept saying, I'm under the stairs, come get yeah. me. I'm under yeah. the stairs, come get yeah. me. Yeah. It, it was rough. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, uh, and then John Downing died uh, uh, from one sixty three. He yep. died off the turntable. This is this is this is a guy that was a, uh, never got that would never be recognized for his heroics. He didn't have to get off that turntable. Uh -huh. He did to have Harry Ford with a game. Yeah, and that's when, when it exploded. Yep. So and the, and you the, know, and the there's whole a lot of on him. there's a lot of heroes out there that you'll never know about unless. I bring it up with someone else. Yeah. You know, it, it takes a lot to make it work or not work. And uh, he died a hero. Who, uh, who was your favorite guy that you worked with in four? I mean, I, when I think back when I was a kid, when I used to see you guys roll up, I do remember you, obviously. I remember Quickie. I remember uh, uh, Harry Ford. I remember Glenn Harris. I remember Hatton. You know, those guys stick out. I mean, I was telling that story. It sticks out to me when I used to go to jobs and I used to see you guys show up, you know, right. even then as a kid, you know, like you said. Well, who, who those, was your favorite guy? My favorite guy. You know what? That's a, you know what? I, 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 uh, that's a tough question because I could probably put two or three guys on top because they all had something that I didn't have. If, and I don't mean that in a bad way. Uh, we all had uh, parts of the puzzle that made Rescue 4 work. But I didn't have all the parts to myself. Uh, ah, you know that's a. You know I learned a lot from Tom Williams and uh, John. Yeah, yeah, John, yeah. John Dillon. I mean, you want to talk a guy that knew Hearst tools? Who is that? The Duke, the Duke John Dillon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. He he worked for Firematics, which is a company out on the island that distributes Hearst tools. Even when he retired, the only guy you wanted to talk to about Hearst tools. Really. He knew it soup to nuts. Every time I see that guy's picture, he's got that little helmet on his head. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the original helmet he had probably for yeah. 30 yeah. years. Now, I'll tell you a kind of a funny story. Uh, uh, you know, in those days, you know, once in a while there was uh, some liquid refreshment. No. Allegedly. Uh, allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. Yeah. But with John, which was cool, a lot of guys thought, you know, John would have to get that. And, and on the way, to the, you have it in his blue denim jacket. Yeah, yeah, nice. Okay. And, uh, He'd be on. He'd have a sip here and there, but the guy had one beer a night. That's it. It was something just to wet his whistle. It was never to make yeah. him better, worse, get him drunk. That was not in John's blood. Mm -hmm. But you know, he liked to have a sip. Yeah. You yeah. know, he was doing his paperwork, and you put a paper towel around him, like uh, like if you were at a teenage party. No one knows what it is, but everyone does. But you know what? <laughs> uh, but I learned a lot from him. I learned a lot from Tom. Uh, <coughs> I learned a lot from Doug Sloan. He was a uh, Doug. He's Sloan. Leave me alone. Doug Leave me alone, Doug Sloan. Yeah, he told me a lot, taught me a lot about welding and cutting because he was a Santa. Yeah, he's a, he was you in know? that picture that that Pete just showed before. He's all the, the way. The only to the thing left. I cut was uh, construction paper at Jericho Public Schools. That's <laughs> <laughs> I was a cutting guy. Uh, I was. 
Uh, oh, that's oh. night. That's nineteen truck. There he is. There, right? That's him all the way left. There's Doug Sloan, Tommy. There's uh, Jesse Bilboa, another sick man. Funny wise, yeah. and there is a, a, a facsimile of uh, Mickey Rooney. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, that's great. <laughs> it looks a little. Bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. Now this was about. Uh, I was still in the engine, but I had been working Look at in the curls. So you see. I hid fifty with a rubber piece of rubber band from. Uh, nice. The I see the I see the curls. That's all I see. Yeah, uh, my hair was was not regulation. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> at, at some point, Mike, Mike went perm. I was yeah, just going to say like some might call that a perm. Yeah. Yeah, it was a perm, of course. Some might call Listen, it that. I got a Mike oh, Milner story yeah. that he probably does not even have a clue as as to remembering this. Okay, yeah. so I'm in one sixteen truck, Mike. Right, <laughs> and we pull up. And uh, 116 is now the jabbering with Rescue 4 for some reason. I uh, I think this is when you guys might have been 262? in. Yeah, they were in 262? They were in 262's 62. quarters. Correct. Mm -hmm. So they pull up, and some of the senior guys are, are going back and forth to Rescue 4 saying, where, you know, because you guys pulled in maybe first. I don't know. You know, where's your ladders? Where are your position? And they're going back and forth. And I'm, I don't have that much time on the job, maybe a couple of years. And you're there, and we're looking to force the door to go into what looks like a brownstone building where the where the door is underneath the stairs, right? And it's and as they're jabbering back and forth, you turn to me and you pull off your glove and you say to me, "Hey, Mike Milner, nice to meet you." <laughs> <laughs> I I probably, never, yeah, that's, yeah, I, that's why I yeah. I never <laughs> forgot it, bro. Never forgot it, dude. That's that is, freaking I'll hilarious. I always did that. I, I was, you know, in the box, you, you know how to become a gentleman because if you were first, second do it a box with an engine and they were first do, you let them go you in first. In, right. So I was always used to, you're a gentleman, no matter who you talk to. Yeah. So when I got the Queens, That was the Bronx though, right? Yeah. 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 So when I got the right. Queens, what I just did to, with Kevin, I did that all the time. If someone didn't want to go into a, 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 a charged uh, apartment house building, I'm going in. You mind? I always was always, do you mind politely? I didn't want the rescue to, well, let's cut the hose and yeah, yeah, where the guy, yeah, 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 yeah. we attitude. shut the mask off, yeah. all that shit. Yeah, no, no, no. They were my brothers. Yeah. You know, yeah. I had to work details there, so I wasn't about to cut the line. You know, so that wasn't happening. We were the only, we were the only two not go. They were, they were going back, motherfucking to each other, back and forth. And me and you were standing there, and you just pulled off. You go like, "Hey, Mike Milner, nice to meet you." <laughs> Kev, Kev, you want to know something? When I was in one seventeen, when they moved there, I remember the guys in one seventeen talking about Rescue Four going there because we we would be to two sixty two if you went north. We were first due to all those boxes, but now yeah. four was kind of cutting us off over there, right? Mm -hmm. And guys were talking about it. And do you know? I, I mean, I remember it as clear as day. There were so many jobs. Over by 262, first due in that yeah, at, like at one that year. Time, right? At that time, it was yeah. like, you know, people, I don't even know what the hell was going on. It was just like, get the hell out of here. Now, all of a sudden, it was like some, a couple of guys made grabs there. Yeah. They went to Metal Day on a job that we were supposed to be first due at. I remember that. Yeah, we had a couple of good jobs there where Jack Walker almost died at a fire. Uh, really? Oh, there, we had some good jobs over there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so, telling you, it was like in, as soon as you guys got there, I think you were there for a year or maybe a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. And it would just seem like, and then when you left, it was like somebody hit the switch. You know, it was like, you know, like that's it. Everything was gone. I'm like, somebody's lighting they shit right up over here. here. They yeah. were weird. They were weird. Oh. They had a, I can't even remember how they did it, but it had a, a really stupid way of making bets. The river like rats? The, that's the, the river rat. Back into you know, a certain cubicle, and they were numbers, so they went to the right bed. You know, it's funny. I remember as a fireman working in Rescue 4 one night, and I went in the uh, – it was Eddie Zielman, and we're in the, in the, in the uh, bunk room. It's pitch black, and we had just come back from a run, and he's breaking so – I think he was like one of the senior guys in 292 at the time. Um, and he was breaking his balls, and the guy from 292 said something like, you know, like, uh, yeah, 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 but that's how the cougars roar while the rescue snore. You know, like that. Do you remember yeah. that saying? Was okay. that was yeah. that a saying? Yeah, well, that, that happened a lot. You know, uh, there were times when they we were out all the time and they're snoring. They were the they, they were, were the cougars, cougars right? They, yeah, 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 they were they, the cougars, right? Oh yeah, they were Woodside Cougars. You know, uh, I forbid they had a fire, uh, but they had some great characters. So don't, don't hold back, Mike. Mike, Mike, don't hold back. I, I'm not. <laughs> I just want to tell you one story before we continue with four. 
uh, just to tell you how I got the name Electric Hit. Now, I, I did have something to do with that afro. Does, I mean, does but, it look like it does now? I mean, right. it like it. <laughs> well, <laughs> if I move the hair the right way, it looks good. You know, I just don't put a light bulb there because then it shines back at me. Uh, so, uh, who are you talking, Mike? Look at this. I mean, are you kidding me? I, I, know, I know. We're, we're challenged, you know. Yes. Follically challenged. Yeah. Follically. Well, you get your hair on your balls, we're all good. That's all that is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're all even down there. You know, yeah. not up here necessarily. Down here, everyone's got hair. Yeah, yeah but so. I just found my first gray pube down there. So I'm really upset, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm not happy. <laughs> I'm not happy with it. You take a picture oh. and frame it, maybe. Or something? I don't want to cut anybody uh, off, but yes, Nick, uh, Nick Carico, I did work. Uh, I did work with your uncle. Very yeah, good I was guy. gonna actually plug oh, yes. it to you in the mail. You want it? What's right. that? Oh, I, what? I'm, I'm, what'd you say to me? I said uh, I, I was, might. I, I might actually pluck it and put it in an envelope. And oh, okay. Cool. In the mail. <laughs> I right. Oi, 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 oi. Wait, can I you say one, one thing? Are, are you thing still sipping on the same one, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm a sipper. He's uh, a sipper. Right. But I'll get there. I, I'm, I'm oh, oh he's something. Oh, he's something. Oh, he's Johnny, something. Johnny Dubs coming in hot going, what the F? You shave your arms, Coobs? You know it. I shave the ball. I shave the ball, bro. <laughs> Is that a car Johnny, accident? Sounds Johnny, like car you know accident. what I shave too? My two legs, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Things are getting crazy. Let me just finish the story, then you can go, go anywhere you want. Go. So I, I became electric head at fifty and nineteen. So I was I was just got into the truck, and we had these. It was a semi new firehouse, but it had single pane glass windows, so the wind roared through the bunk room. Mm -hmm. So I guess I, I did it too many times. So I guess the last time I did it, I said, you know, I, and I said this all the time. You know what? I'm going to go upstairs. My parents, I complained to my parents. They were in Florida. They sent me a nice Sears and Roebuck electric blanket. Mm. Wonderful. Okay, great. Mike, so, where were they? Boca? Were they in Boca? No, they were in Fort Myers on the <laughs> the, uh, the Lutheran <laughs> side of... The uh, Boca Vista phase two. Oh, Boca hey. Vista. <laughs> None of that garbage. Uh, Sorry. Bro. So, so... Uh, <laughs> Okay, go ahead, Mike. Will you let the guy get the fucking story out? Right, okay. Yeah, okay. Electric blanket. Yeah. Electric blanket. I must have said it one too many times. You know what, guys? After dinner, I said, I'm going to go upstairs and heat my bed with the electric blanket. Well, I said it one too many times. I go upstairs. Oh, boy. I didn't know it. They hot wired it to the frame. <laughs> Come out. <laughs> so I jumped in and. Holy shit. I said, Are I you kidding me? Sleep. Oh, it was my God. Out of my head. And that's <laughs> how I really cemented. Now, Dude. It took me 10 years to find the culprit who was the last guy I You would have thought it was. <laughs> who was it? How did you, how'd you find out that he did it? Oh my God! One day, Dennis Moranchek, who went to 154 or 136, I went. I don't know what company he went to in Queens. One of those companies around here. We were at a party, and he finally said, "Mike, it wasn't this guy, that guy, the last guy." No oh, shit, yeah. dude. That's a great freaking story. You got a good bro. zap, huh? Oh man, it was. That's hilarious. I didn't <laughs> did that again. <laughs> oh, one more story about the Vision Six. Go. Oh, shit. Okay. Here, here's a really funny story. It happened to be in February. It's snowing. The wind's whipping. And in, in, in the in the eighty early, late eighties and early late eighties, early eighties, late seventies, it wasn't like they were driving those big uh, fifty thousand dollars Suburbans all wheel drives. You were driving a Dodge Dart, four door red. Looked like it was hand painted red. With a decal, <laughs> FDMY, a uh, hand painted six, and a Mars light. That's that was it. Dodge I told Dart, the love it. So uh, I don't think the de deputies ever slept. They knew everything that was going on. So the uh, Pete Grasso, great guy. He was one of the eights, and he was a little uppity occasionally. So uh, he had the bed on the engine side, right next to the door. So. Uh, the chief would wake him up and say, Pete, we got to run. Okay, chief, put on his coat and, and they he'd go start the car and the chief would get in. Well, the chief would already be in the car and Pete would get there and just drive off. He's showing the ticket. All right, box so-and-so. Okay, I got it, chief. So unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, 
Pete gets a, sh a shake on the shoulder. And, okay, chief, gets in the car. Now it's uh, not the chief. It's another guy, Norm Kernan. Got the collar up, the hat on, the blue, uh, the uniform cap on. All right, Pete, make a left. We're going up the box. Oh, okay, chief. They, they make a turn. The siren is blaring. About a block away, you hear the siren just go. Because then Pete looked and said, holy shit, it's Norman Kern. They didn't have a box. They just wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> and we, and we were all in on it. We were all in on it. So we were all downstairs now laughing our balls off as the shit. car comes back. Oh, you know, my God. Now, Pete had a little up like I did with the electric blanket. So sometimes you got to prune the tree. You know, it's all, all natural. In the prune the tree. I love you know what? It. Tighten the bolts, prune Tighten the tree, the however it works out. Tree. I like to prune the tree one. And, and that's what, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, only certain departments have that. Because when you have 10, 12 guys in a, in a building, you know, uh, you, you got to be careful a little bit, you know? That's You're going to be an terrible. asshole one day, and the next day there's another person replacing Oh, somebody's going to take the pressure right off you, right? Somebody but, else is going to be You don't want to be that obnoxious fool for no better word hey you know, hey pete part of the team. Yeah. and once in a while they, they i got it many times mike it's time to okay got it rain it in yeah yeah so speaking of rain it in we had a couple of pictures sent to us uh i wanted to show you see maybe if you can uh help uh elaborate because uh they are uh, pretty uh pretty funny i got you like, what are you doing right here? Okay. I, I, okay. <laughs> Listen, I, 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 I'm smart enough to realize if you're going to be a knucklehead, do it on the clock. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I'm not going to do this at home. So what do you have, two mops life. on your head there? Is that, was that the original mop That was head? a mop in, 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 in a reference to my uh, former life as mop head. And it was, I think it was whatever the 20th or 30th anniversary of Woodstock. So nice. you know, what, what else am I going to do? There's nothing going on. How many times can you start the K twelve saw or you know uh, you know check the Scott gauge and uh, oh, you got to do something to be funny? So I get on the street and I got a lot of hots and horns and hey, so it worked. It, is, well, it, that, is, that, it that, is this a rescue four? Yeah, that's four. Yeah, that's sixty four eighteen. Because I'm looking at the van right there. It's got to be like eighties <laughs> vintage van right there, bro. It probably was the late eighties. So maybe it was the thirtieth or twentieth. So yeah. but, you know, they, you I'm, more have, concerned, I'm more concerned. I'm more concerned with this photo right here. What is this? <laughs> that, that was is, another is, bird. Is, a little birdie flew into my ear. Sent me that one. A little bird. Yeah, I know who said that. Yeah. yeah. What's going yeah, on listen, with that? Uh, uh, Chico was a great guy. Now, <laughs> Chico. Uh, this interesting story about Chico. Well, we were, we were close. We, we hung out together with the families and stuff like that. Chico now lives in Arizona. Okay. And Chico is of uh, Hispanic and Italian heritage. Now, from what I gather, Chico was Chico the Italian when he took the test. No, he was the Hispanic taking the test because you get on three to one. So, uh, then he, you know, so that's so what played, he played the he race. Played the one. Hey, I would have done the same thing. Hell yeah. You know? And of course, you guys let him know that. Oh, man, yeah. Now, Chico was one of our chauffeurs. Now, but Chico obviously, you love him by this picture. It looks like you guys oh, really oh, like oh. each other. No, you know what? <laughs> when, when I worked in the South Bronx in the, in the Webster uh, uh, tenements, sometimes the people that lived there didn't want to get out of the elevator to let you in. Right. So what I had to do, we would get in, and then I would tongue kiss somebody, and then oh. everyone would go, hey, man. I said these guys are crazy, and they let, and then we had free access to go up to the fire. So Chico and I like to fool around, and that it was simple. You know, we love each other. That that, that explains this next photo. Then, uh, <laughs> hold on, I'll go back. there it is. There you go. Yeah, well, there you know, it is. Maybe I, it doesn't I, I, explain I, that one. I don't know, bro. <laughs> Well, what, this describe the scene. This is on the clock. You know, of like, course. You know, I know what I was making. You're getting hours. paid. Getting paid. Uh, I had, you know, I had my red suspenders, so I was a traditional fireman with a bra. And uh, I, I've been known to be sort of, you know, a lot of people used to think I was like the maybe other side. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You no, not at all. Played no, for the other team. I, you were I playing for the other team, maybe. You know, I, uh, I remember Kevin Williams. <laughs> Uh, was a covering office. I don't even think he was assigned to rescue three. And I didn't even, I think it was a covering battalion chief. Comes in around six o'clock. Roll call. So I'm in a uniform like that. And I, I used to wear white pearls. 
Oh my God. I might think he played for the other team too. The Chiefs like looking eyeballs, you know, and he goes to Kevin after we're 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 dismissed. Uh, you know, I want that uh fireman that changes your uniform and take the pearls off. <laughs> I'd take the pearls off. So Kevin what, what, kind of what, kind of white, what, what kind of white pearls were they? Were they real they were, pearls? <laughs> or they were the other did you white have a pearl pearls necklace? Or did you have well, a pearl necklace? That would that would actually that would actually uh that was a pearl necklace I got out of the that would actually uh, explain the final picture here when you did a stint with the village people. <laughs> oh, you it looks like you got so Let me get back to the other picture. Oh, oh, oh yeah. So, <laughs> I always had luck in the firehouse. We had a rip roaring job in the four six. So same guy comes yeah. back, say thank you. So Kevin. Oh, goes, really? Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. So Kevin goes to the chief. I guess those pearls did their job. Yeah, yeah. Keep, <laughs> he could keep the pearls on. Yeah, yeah. Out the door. Out the door. <laughs> hey, listen. In the end, it doesn't matter what. As long as you do the job, nobody gives a shit about yeah, anything, right? Yeah. Yeah. I guess you right, could call me a crush that's, let's, that's cool. let's get to the big one. Let's get to the plane in the drink. Mike coming home on metal day. Give it to us, bro. USF 50-50, right? Oh, yeah. We were at the firehouse. Um and the call came in, and uh, you know, of course, they, the uh, Port Authority like loves to play games with the gates. You know, right, 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 all the time, right. So yeah, I'm not even going to explain that. This That's is 1989, 1989, yeah. September 20th, 1989. Right. So 50 uh, 50 was in the drink. Was going to North Carolina. I guess it was a mechanical f malfunction. The guy said, "I got to stop." He put the brakes on and ended up in the East River. It broke into two pieces. So. Uh, I had Kevin Kelly and I can't, I think his name was Sam Levine. He was Jewish. He was a show. Oh, oh, God bless. God oh, bless. Just for the hell of a guy, was, I got some video of this event that I'll share for you. Okay, sure. Go, sure, go ahead. Holy shit. Is this the plane actually coming in? Yeah, uh, this is from R1 Smoke Eater. We love him. Always coming in hot with the good stuff. Oh, that's good. So describe the scene. Uh, it, it, you know, there was uh, – that's not the same uh, plane crash. He's no, it's wrong. not? No, that, no that's, that's, in, that's in March. That's correct. Oh. The one we're looking at is September 20th. So he's Sorry. fired. He's fired. I'm fired. <laughs> They, so anyway, you're fired. Listen, they go to plane crashes every other week. You know what I mean? That's how they do it back then. Yeah, back in the old. So days. we got, we got. I, I got lowered by Sammy and Kevin Kelly on three hundred seven on a roof rope. I had my uh, Gumby suit on, and uh, a couple of us f swam out to the uh, to the wing. And there were people out there, and a pilot and, and two of the uh, stu uh, stewardesses, for no better term, at the time they were stewardesses. Nice. And I went inside with. Way to hold uh, back, Mike. Way to hold back. Good man. <laughs> I'm not politically correct. So I, we, I got inside and I we, we we unbuckled a few people and then I swam, got back out, swam to the tail where Tommy was. And when I got there, Chris Blackwell and uh, Jerry Murtha with it. So we're inside. We had a hearse tool. Uh, she was trapped pretty well, like really pinned in there. From you the, had the, the hearse spot. tool in there? I think we had the hearse tool. No yeah. shit. Or the cutters, one of the two. And she was pinned down really tough. There was no way we were going to get her out without uh, 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 tools. And I'm not talking hand tools. So uh, in the beginning, the, of course, the uh, NYPD wash from the helicopters was pushing us deeper into the water. Tommy got that taken care of, uh, Williams. And then one of the guys from the issue wanted to get in. Tommy knew him and says, you're not getting in here. We can barely fit three people. And we started with water ankle deep. By the time we got up here, the water was this deep. Matter of fact, we, we, we got back before we got her out of there and said, listen, in another minute or two, we're going to have to leave it here. That's how serious no it was. Shit. Oh, oh, no shit. Oh, no doubt about it. Anna Cruz was going to Now, was she was in the back or the front part? The back. That okay. back piece right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, the water was going up, even without the wash. It was, I guess the tide was coming in maybe, or it was being dragged out. Uh, so... Uh, we hey Mike, not, Mike, not to interrupt you, but Fennell said Jews don't like water. 
I don't know how you guys drink holy water. I'll ask you that. We don't drink that's, it. That's, right. that's got a small oh, man. Holy uh, shit. Go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. So, so we, we, we eventually got her out. And uh, she was a wonderfully uh, sophisticated uh, uh, woman from uh, Carolinas, uh, Anna Cruz. Now, they, she doesn't, no person usually does that. She came back for Metal Day and gave. Chris, me, and uh, uh, Jerry, I think it was 200 or $250. No shit. Uh, check each. Okay. Now, of course, back to the fire. Yeah, we have, you know, we uh, have pictures of that, the metal day with, with Mike. Oh, uh, Roger, that coming up. This I have. This I have. Let me tell you of the many things I have. Yeah, Mike. This one. Oh, yes. There she is right there, right? Is that her, Mike, right there? A really sweet lady. And, uh, <laughs> We tried to find her after Tommy Williams died, but we could never find her. So I don't know if she moved or died, but she was a really, really sweet lady. And I just want to say that Chris died on 9 11, you know. Mm. Uh, and, you know, Jerry's just a great guy. You know, there's not a better bagpipe player than Jerry. I'm sorry. I mean, I, I got to let uh, some of that stuff out. So we why all do you have, why do you have crutches there, uh, Mikey? Like you got crutches there, right? Oh, that was because I was in a. A volley car accident. Nice. A chief that was a good a... prop, though, for the medal. It looked better for the medal. Oh, yeah, it looked great. No, this, uh, that, uh, actually, it was Joe Minarchik who went to uh, squad one, I think. Joe Minarchik, I think, worked there. So, anyway, I he was. I know a, that name. Yeah, he was a volunteer chief, and we were coming back from a place in Huntington, and uh, the court of law couldn't grab him now, anyway, so it doesn't matter if I tell the story. So, we were a little under the weather. So we're on this Lawrence Hill Road in, in the Cold Spring Harbor, one of these short drives to get along. And it's like this and like that, hardly any lights. This is in the, 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 the uh, you know, early 90s, uh, before they had better lights. And he couldn't make a turn, and we ended up on the roof. The thing catches on fire. Oh, I'm like full of that. I broke my ankle like I knew it. Because I, I I was no one was coming, I I braced myself. So I snapped my ankle in about five places. And there was another guy with me. Uh and uh he was flailing because he was upside down, the car's on fire, and I was pretty cool about it. You know, it's on fire. You know, it's not gonna have one of those giant explosions like in Manix or right, uh, right. You see in the movies. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. So I cut him out and you know, we got him out of there and I, that's why I'm in crutches. I mean, Although I did make straight. a pretty penny. You, uh, you fall out of a two-story building unharmed, yeah. but you break your ankle in multiple <laughs> places. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but when you went to get the medal, I mean, did you, you know, were you were you married at that time? You know, was it a good prop? No, I wasn't married. No, no, like, no, no, I wasn't. No, yeah. I, I haven't even gotten to those stories. Nice. Oh, oh, come on. I got plenty of stories. Well, we're going to have to have a Mike Milner episode, He's two, got more brother. stories than Walt Disney, this guy. The, yeah, but the, you know what is uh, Louie and, and Pete and, and, and uh, Kevin – I tell these stories not not to brag. It's just listen again. FDNY. I live FDNY. I don't have big pictures of it, but if anybody wants to sit down and talk about it, I talk about it because you know what? It's the greatest job on earth. Simple as that. Greatest there's job. The big, there's the big leagues and there's the little leagues. Oh, holy shit! It's interesting okay. you say those. Yeah, John, Johnny too is in the is in the house. I see him there. Hi, John. Did you work? Did you work with him? Briefly, he was a Briefly. bop. That's why, right? Wasn't he a bop when he got there? I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. I, I didn't know him that well, John. You know, he was always very nice to me. He always said I had the most medals. But which, what, what does that mean? You know. Uh, but uh, I do appreciate of... the compliment. But so that's what happened uh, that day. And then, well, let me tell you. So everyone has the division medal party. So I, you know, like everybody else, Chris got a check for two fifty. Jerry got a check for two fifty. I go up there. There's, uh, I forgot who the chief was. Uh, uh, my captain's there, Jesse Bilboa, who I said was a real knucklehead earlier in the program. They prevent me, pre present me with two 50 pound bags of $250 worth of pennies. <laughs> <laughs> they had. <laughs> Oi! <laughs> so, so there you go. So instead of getting a paper check, I had two hundred fifty dollars in pennies. Oi! Oi! What's going on, Pete? Oi, Don't forget the oi! Oi! 
No. That's freaking great, Mike. Something's going to happen like that to you. Dude, you know, you I love it. That's failing, a great story. And then you hit the sandbar. Boop, and it's over. Here's the footage that we were looking for. Okay, yeah, that's the footage. That The fifty, the 250, uh, that's incredible, man. That's the yeah. brothers right there. That's a perfect. Yeah, right. uh, all planned out. Oh, Dinkins was back then? Holy shit, yeah. you are Oof. old. Oof. Where's your medal now? Do you still have it? Did you sell it on eBay? Oh, what did you do with it? I got him. It's in his bedroom. Hold on. He said he's got him. E M. Oh, wait a minute. You know what I mean? He's got there more. He oh, he's, he's going to grab him. He's gone. He's like a flash with the robe. Don't well, here's our lady, right? The lady that. Uh, that's right. She gave it. That's uh, Jerry Murtha. That's Jerry right Murtha right there, bro. Rescue. Uh, he was in Rescue 3 when I knew him, right? Bro? Correct. He rescue was in Rescue 3. 3. Okay. No, he was always in Rescue 3. Yeah. No, I'm not going to. I'm Listen. I Listen. He I'm sold them on eBay. He definitely no. sold them. I still got my two. <laughs> Hey! Oh. Hey! He's hey, got Mike, more than one. Mike, Mike, show him what's under the robe, bro. The color of the <laughs> Show him, bro. No, no, this is, you know, this is, Does it say Rescue 4 on it? You got blue drawers on there? Mike's got, got blue drawers <laughs> underneath. No, I don't have his, blue drawers. You, I saw him. What are you tell me? I, you don't I, have blue no, drawers. I shit blue. I shit blue. That's oh, nice. He's, he's got blue drawers underneath his you have the robe right there, bro. But, uh, yeah, there, I, uh, I wasn't there that day because actually I had to go to the hospital with my crutches, but uh, she was a great lady. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's very cool. Jerry looks I'm like he's got, he's, got, uh, he's got a nice little thing going on his chest there, too. You know, you he know. got the Bennett that year. Did he, he really? The Bennett for what? Not that, right? For something. No, not for that. that. Holy moly guacamole. Yeah, you got to understand something with Matt. I really didn't do me. anything on this fucking job, to be honest with you. Oh. <laughs> when you I look at you guys making these what? fucking grabs. But it doesn't oh, work that way because a lot of it is there were a lot of bosses I had that wouldn't write anybody. It was right. the pride of just doing the job. So I, there's a lot of guys out there over the years that they deserve a medal, but yeah, yeah, yeah. they weren't getting written up. That happened. Yeah. Urban wouldn't write anybody up either. Now, I, I do know uh, Chief Burns was there for my uh, the next medal I got. I hated rescue, but his son is now the captain. <laughs> oh! Hey, look at this handsome fellow getting. Uh, I mean, really? With the prop? Yeah, yeah. Look at the props, really? Props. That's all real. Look You're supposed to go to the medical office like more. that. See, I did limp a little more, you know. Just yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Look at the perm on him. Look at the perm, buddy. <laughs> Let me rewind. That perm is incredible. I mean, that is <laughs> wow, dude. That is a classic. Uh, it was wow. not a standard Shit. haircut for the FDNY, but who, you know, come on. Short, tight curls right there, bro. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, that what is that? Velvet? Beautiful. Dude, I think he got white socks on there. Does he got white socks on there? Wait, he does. I think he does. He does. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. a bitch that guy's on. getting a medal, and he's got freaking white socks <laughs> on. Look at these Chief white Steve socks. Look at that. Yeah, white oh, socks. Oh, my God. That is definitely white socks. Chief Steve would not approve of that, bro. I know that. that <laughs> oh my God! He does. I can oh see it. my word! Thank you, Pete. What Son in the hell bitch. is that? <laughs> and you know know what? Time for that. that particular medal. Uh, oh, that one. Wait a minute, Louis. That, that one. one. No. Oh, the, oh the, that. No, no, no. The other one I got. The next time I got one for the uh, water ship. Ah. I, two of my ex-girlfriends with me. Two. He knows how to do it. Michael tell me, Jerry. tell me the story. What was the story with? Uh, I, I again, I had a little couple of little chicken yeah, little birds. What was the story with? Let me check. Uh, somebody came to a party, some type of a party, dressed up. Oh, and yeah. the rest of the I, 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 uh, Melissa, my ex-wife, well, um, she's one of my rocks to this day. We, we, you know, we have two kids to raise, so you know, to be divorced and not being friendly, like you can't is, do that. You know, is, she the, the uh, is she the personal trainer? Uh, sort of. She does makeup, all kinds of stuff. She's Who's a hard trainer. Where is the one? So she's the... hot. So she's hot. Well, she's nineteen years younger than. Me. She's hot. Yeah. So you go for she's the young. Hot. You so anyhow, the... so uh, she, uh, she, I can't think of Sean's last name, but it's Mickey Conboy and uh, uh, Jimmy, oh, uh, Jimmy O'Connell. Uh, I can't think of his last name. Right? Whatever, some Mick. What does not matter? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so I, I, so it was something. Close. It was so, I don't know. It could have been Chico's uh, retirement party. I don't remember. But you know, we were having a good time, and Melissa would come in with uh, bringing a pretty attractive girlfriend with her. They would be going 
somewhere and she always stop in and say, Hey Mike, what's going on? And nice. uh, drive the guys she crazy. Comes, she comes in a nice dress and uh, Mickey Conboy's in the corner of the ready room in rescue four going, uh, Oh, Johnny Hopkins was there too. Really? John Hopkins. Dude, that guy, if you want to talk about a straight on the on the line guy, you know, this yeah, is guy though. I love oh. that guy. I still talk. When he sees fight. me, he like he does this. I'm like, Mike, you're a, you're this, you're that. I mean, how do you do it? I mean, he's a great guy. Anyway, so they're in the corner, and Melissa walks in in this nice black dress. And uh <laughs> uh I think it was, yeah, it was Mickey uh, Mickey Conboy goes, uh no, no, it's uh, was it Mickey Conboy? No, Mickey Conboy goes. Hey, that must be the dancer. So Sean, <laughs> I, can't, I can't think of Sean's last name. This is too short. Oh, so hold on a second. This wasn't wives. This was just a guy's night out. Yeah, she and comes she in. just showed up. Oh, all right. So everybody My thinks ex she's Melissa, she's the she just show right. up. All right. So she shows up. She's in the dress. She oh, walks shit. in. A lot of the guys knew her. And uh, Mickey Conway goes, Oh, that must be the dancer. So Sean goes, Oh, that's Mike's girlfriend. <laughs> to this day, he doesn't no even talk about shit, it. No really. But it was the funniest thing going. That's really right. What yeah. you, know, speaking, you know? Speaking of dancers, who's this guy? Oh, oh, my God. oh, oh man, nice! Asshole. Look at that package. Nice, nice like red that. package. <laughs> Where'd you get that from? Johnny Walters had to send that, bro. Little bird. A couple of birds are flirting around. To, to flirting That's around. a cool picture. <laughs> That's something I would do. You know, you gotta, you gotta be loose. You know, I mean, you know what's funny? My ex would say to me, Mike, why do you like going to the firehouse all the time? It had nothing to do with getting away from her. It just was, guess what? When you're at the firehouse, that's the only time a man has control of his life. Yeah, Think man. There's no door. Oh, hey, Mike. No kids, John, no Gain is, John Gain is on. Did you see what he wrote there? Hey, Murray, tell Louie and Kev about the time you used to bring in Melissa's laundry and the boys would put her thong on their noses. <laughs> oh, I would do the same thing, bro, no doubt. No, no, that's true. Now, I, I, I want to tell John one thing. Guess who's Yummy. listening tonight? Guess who's listening? Melissa? Yes. Oh, goodness. Isn't that so special? John, you owe Melissa. <laughs> Hey, oh, she did. I used to do. I used to do the laundry. Of course. Why did you do? Why did you do it? Oi, you did your own laundry. You know that. I did my own laundry. You want to save a few fucking pennies? You did your laundry in the firehouse. Hey, Milna, you know you're not supposed to do your personal laundry in the firehouse. What's the matter with you? Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Before that, Mike. Before that. If Melissa's listening, can she send any pictures in right now of those stones? Is that, <laughs> is that inappropriate? I, I don't want to be out of bounds here. I'm just saying. I don't know. She might, and she's a good. She uh, listen. She got a little out of line. You got a little out of line yourself. Just a little listen, bit. No, no, it's something a little bit. A little bit. Uh, for me, that's to great. consider him one of my best friends. Listen, not many guys can say that about their exes. They're either living in a basement or they're pissed off. Uh, she, she actually she helped me get out of my funk after 9 11. So, right, we'll could do stuff. Hold on, a minute, okay. Mike. Hold on, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't have any that. tissues. Right. I only right. brought liquor. I'm I didn't back. know we were going to need fucking is, tissues. I'll, I'll tell one more, two more Melissa stories, oh. and then we can go somewhere. Oh, listen, they're right. all very funny. Is I'm it involved bongs? I'm getting all hopped up on Melissa. Hold on a minute. <laughs> all right, well, let's get this one. What the fuck is that? Oh, oh, get down for that. Yeah. I'm in. Oh, one night, she always used to come in. All right. So one night, uh, we had a run. Now, I didn't know this till after Kenny Memon said this to her, that, that two days earlier, he got ringed out for having a female recorder on the ring. Nice. Right? Okay. So he was a little edgy. And I got it. You know, I don't blame him. You know, get yelled at. You know, you don't want, you don't want to be yelled at as an officer. So one night she comes in, she gets on the rig. Billy Quick's on the rig. I can't think of the other guy's name. Quick here. Yeah, and Kenny's the, the boss. And he was wearing a denim jacket. So we, we go to this crawl, and it was a rip roar uh, carpet store fire on Archer Avenue. Yuck. You could, in the street, you had to wear a mask. That's how bad it was. And Melissa said, oh, I had smoke immolation. She couldn't say <laughs> <laughs> immolation. 
You're in the ghetto. <laughs> hey, dude. Hey, dude. He's hot. We can't it doesn't matter. Yeah. We're going to let it slide. Inhalation. <laughs> inhalation. Show me a thong. I don't care. You know, I it felt like I was going to smother Kate and die. I don't care what you say. I don't give a shit. As long as you've got a thong on, I don't care. You know? uh, so, anyway, so uh, we, we pulled back in and we're all getting off the rig. So, I was going to step. We said this big wooden box with steps because this rig's so high. Everyone's getting off and Melissa's getting off. And Kenny sees that, and he kind of blew a little hissy fit. And I got it after I f- figured out what really happened. What is she doing in there? And blah blah blah. And right in front of Kenny, who's a lieutenant, she goes, "Michael, you let the janitor yell at you." <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Dude, she's even I hotter. Can't, than I, I can't have these stories up. Now she's even hotter, bro. Well, I don't hot. even care what she oh, looks oh, like. Oh, an attitude like that, bro. Oh, well, she, well, you know, it's, it's the Long Island stuff, you know. Was she Jewish? Yeah, of course, of course she was Jewish. Of course, Oi. Course, my Oi. 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 Hey, Milna, are you still on the first martini? I'm gonna have, I have one already pre made. I'm almost there. got nipples. He's got nipples in there. I got something stuck in my throat. Hold on a minute. Pussy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's got a titty in his fucking. <laughs> so anyhow, let, let me just tell you one more story, and we can get back to whatever you want to talk. All right, go. So, uh, Harry Ford's at. And that's why I'm wearing this robe tonight. See the method to my madness. What's that? Uh, the first year anniversary. I'm sitting. I'm at the firehouse, and Ke- uh, Harry would sit in the corner and read the, uh, do the crossword puzzle. He's a fer- er, ferocious or ferocious doer of crossword puzzles. You do it all day long. And that was his chair. It was a black chair, vinyl chair with aluminum frame. And that was his where you would sit down and ask <laughs> him for answers to life's questions in, in, in life. So I, I'm sitting down and I go, you know, uh, Harry, we're gonna, <laughs> Melissa and I are going for our first anniversary. I'm going to take it to Mount Trobot skiing. And I don't know how we figure this out. Mike, oh, that's great. Julie, my sister-in-law, works for Air Canada. I'm going to get you first class champagne, and you're going to have a great time. Okay. Now, remember, <laughs> she's 19 years younger than me. Okay? 19 years. It's a big age discrepancy. So we get online. We get on the queue, and out of nowhere, this cute little blonde, Mr. and Mrs. Milner, <laughs> go up there like we're like uh, royalty. Two tickets, first class, coming and going, champagne, blah, blah. We fly up there, we're skiing, having a great time. And all along, we're going, how the hell did Julie know us? Never met her. How did she know who we were? So we get back to the firehouse, and uh, I go, Harry. He's back doing his crossword puzzles. Harry, how did uh, Julie know us? I said, look for the old man with his daughter. <laughs> he wasn't wrong, was he? he wrong? Right. He ain't lying, dude. Yeah. The whole time, my... the whole time you're fucking telling that story, somebody was... wrote, somebody just wrote, you can milk anything with nipples, <laughs> <laughs> dude. And fucking right. Murray, Murray Mipples, name. Murray Mipples was the other Anthony one. Anthony Gonzo, is he dude, a rescue two guy? I was fucking I don't know. crying, dude. I uh, couldn't, for, I couldn't hold truck. myself. Four truck Frederick Schultz says, I've got nipples. Can you mur- milk me, Fokker? <laughs> hey, listen, pal. Uh, I got stories that you can never say online. Never. You know what Harry used to say to me all the time, bro? When I used to go there and, like, if I was dieting or something and I would, you know, take the chicken and scrape the breadcrumbs off or whatever, he'd be like this Kubla, eat what you want. I uh, eat what you're supposed to and die. I uh, know. Eat what you want and die when you're supposed to. Yes. <laughs> but he was right. <laughs> he was right. Uh, we had I, I have nothing personal. You, you walk around buff like you're at, at the Mr. Universe contest. That, so, thank Harry you, Mike. Thank you. There, and Harry's answer was always, Mike, do you eat to live or live to eat? Yeah. Here's yeah. a simple question. Yeah. A simple question. My, I just eating to, to, to enjoy, not live. Oh, I, one more All right. Uh, we're on stories, unless you have another. Bob well, hold on. I wanted to say, I Wait, just, is, this, is this about your old lady, your ex old lady? No, I'm, no, no, it's not. Oh, uh, dude, because no, I'm no, I, just, I wanted to right ask now, you. Bro. I, I just up. saw for the first, first time, two. because of course I looked you up and I started to do some research on you. I just saw the first video of you with 
uh, Johnny Gain with the the Brillo pads. Oh, you never saw that before? I never saw that before. That was Dave. I was freaking Bill, laughing my Bill ass Bernie. off. Right. I didn't know he was like that. Like he was. Oh, uh, yeah, you got to be like that when you're. I was in charge but of the shirt lock. I was the same way. Nobody. There's no freebies. There's no IOUs. Uh, there's none of that they're, shit. They're, they're, they're I like Johnny Gain. I wish he had the video because it's it's a real funny video. Uh, I see you're out there. You're sprinkling Brillo pads the yeah. whole way down. <laughs> the, when you're the commissar, it's a tough job. Okay. You try. You only have a limited amount of house watch money. You got. I mean, house house tax to work with. It's a thankless job, man. Nobody yeah, and when you shit. go on vacation, do you really need to get a phone call in Aruba? We're out of chocolate syrup. No, <laughs> that's what guys do. That's how stupid they are. Instead of just saying, you know and what? They want to I'm break your balls about it. They want to yeah, fucking instead break of holding on to the friend. receipt and say, "I'll give you the receipt when I go back to Wall Bombs or Stop and Shop." No. John, where's the chocolate syrup? We're, we're, we're losing it. I mean, come on, you know. But that, so I got that. So I put the soap pads up, and this is a Dateline show. Kevin, you know, did you see it? Did you see the video? Yeah. yeah. No, I no didn't Kevin, see it. Kevin. No, I didn't see it. I think I have an image of it. Hold on. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, it. Yeah, that's no, it. That ain't it. That, it? it was, that wasn't it. No, no, no. That's not it. No, no. That's yeah, that's sorry. Pete's humor. That's he's that's, a funny guy. It's Corin. <laughs> that's Corin Thong. Yeah. I so can't anyways, get that I thong out of my head, bro. I'm sorry. And then I put, uh, 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 he wouldn't come out because I wait. I said during the, the the filming, I said, you know what? He's going to pick up these soap pads, which he did. But he went out to the uh, the, the house watch because sometimes you know how the house watches. If you you're pissed off at somebody going to house watch to get lost, you make believe you're listening to the radio, and you to get you just don't want to hear you don't anything. Have to see anybody, right? You don't have to see exactly. Shit. You make believe you're answering phones and you're being the right. Well, you're not. You, you, you care less. You're not paying attention. You're not so doing dishes. Have, you're bringing your meal there. You're not doing dishes. You're being right. Exactly. So John didn't want to come out of house watch. So after he wouldn't pick up the soap pads, guess what I did? Went to the back, filled a, a milk box with the papers, and tossed it lit into the house watch. And closed and the door. Finally, and closed the yeah, door. Yeah, and he finally came out. Yeah. And he picked up the soap. No, pads. but the best was he had the, he had like the hose there. And he was yeah, just and like, him back. Was, yeah, he yeah, was, was just like watch. very funny, guys. Very funny. He's like, oh, yeah. I'll get him back. John was a funny again. guy. We called him Father John. Uh, no, it was like good. I like it. It's a thankless job. I, mean, yeah, yeah, I used yeah. to catch Harry Farrell when he ran the com commissary like three o'clock in the morning. Now I know why he did the three o'clock. You like the late watch? Now I know why he liked it. He'd be in there with the one ketchup bottle on top of the other drink. Oh, that's right. <laughs> great jelly out of one bottle to the other to, to minimize it and get rid of the clutter. It's, these guys are lunatics. How I mean, much can one man do? That's what he said. How yeah, much can I, one I man do? Kevin, I can never do that. Mm. Uh, here's the Johnny Gaines and, and the uh, Carlos. Oh, hey, hey. <laughs> oh. Bunch of comedies we have here over the PA, John Gaines, that says uh, John Paul in the chat. Oh, what do you got, Rufi? Go with it. So I wanted to ask him, uh, I mean, without getting too much into Father's Day and 9-11, I mean, uh, the last few weeks we've kind of uh, burned that up a little bit and uh, it kind of brings everybody down. So I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Oklahoma City because I've never really uh, heard inside information or uh, firsthand knowledge of that stuff. So you, okay. you were in the first FEMA team that went out there that, uh, that, that, that day? Yeah, uh, not only the first FEMA team, uh, it changed during mid uh, uh, course when we got out there, but all these guys that went there for that that first uh, deployment, it was all volunteer. It didn't become paid till halfway through the uh, the trip that it went paid. So I got to give a lot of these guys credit because they went there on their own. I know, I know, Hatton there. Who's the other guys there? You got Billy McCarthy, Kenny Memon, Lieutenant Billy was in rescue for it. It was mostly in sock then. And of course, me in my more pensive mode. I see that, bro. You look yeah. very. I was very. I, was, I know. I was very religious for some reason in that picture. I don't oh, know. you saw? You found God right there, bro. Uh no, I'm not no. seeing it. Nah. God for me starts with an M, but and I'll leave it at that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Maury. 
<laughs> Men? Maury's wigs don't come <laughs> off. Listen, all I can think about, <laughs> listen, right now, we, God, we, uh, the bike, God for me right now, starts with a T. And that's your old lady's song. I can't get that out of my head right now. <laughs> hey, Mike, Johnny, too, just said, hey, John, he called you a great guy. It's on tape. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, you might not live that one down, bro. No, you can send, send me a copy. I'm, I'm in. Uh, All right. So we, we're at House Watch, and of course, you know, we you know heard it, and then uh, uh, okay, who's gonna go? And then it was a lot. Of, a lot of people were handpicked before me, but they had wimpy wives that said you can't go. Okay, so uh, I went in his uh, those places. Uh, it was great. Uh, I met a lot of great guys. It was the first time. I think in a lot of ways that it started to improve the relationship between uh, emergency services and us. PD. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Don't believe me. But anyhow, it, it helped open up some communication. So it always, it, it did help out a lot. And uh, it was me with Bobby Mercy. He was from Oklahoma, a great guy. Uh, so uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, we went out there. We got on a C-5 on the way there. We came back on a C-30. So we landed in Tinker Air Force Base. Now, this was in, I guess, what, what year was the, uh, the bombing again? 91? No, that was, uh, it was 95? later. 95? Petey, when was that uh, Oklahoma City bombing? Uh, you got the date on that, Pete? I'll get it. Um, I'll get it right now. Little known fact, or I don't know if it's well known, but Timothy McVeigh was at Waco the day that went down. Wow. Um, yeah, there's footage of him sitting on a vehicle watching it all go down, and that was the inspiration <laughs> um, behind his bombing of uh, o Oklahoma City. Right. It was insane. Well, whatever. Uh, yeah, it was insane. Uh, but, uh, you know, it was. Guys just saying 95, yep. Yeah. In right. 95. So we went, right. Thank you, Pete. Uh, so we, we flew into Tinka. Now, they had, when you land, it's a, it's a pretty big Air Force base. And they, they don't mess around. Now, in the in the background were like the stealth bombers, which were pretty new at the time. The B ones, cool. whatever they had. Yeah, man. So uh, my guest Bazito is is a jokester. So uh, we get off the plane and uh, Squad One, right? Uh, rescue Two. Oh, he was in Rescue Two then. Yeah, oh, I became yeah. a lieutenant in Squad One. Yes, I got so <clears throat> he was a he was a jokester, and then he was the only guy that called a, a Downey Dutch. No one else called anybody but God. No shit. Or Chief Downey, Dutch. No shit. Okay, so uh, we get there, we get off the plane, and he's joking around, and there's, there's two Jeeps drive in. Guys have AK-47s or whatever they have. They're heavy armor. And uh, he starts to put his foot on the yellow line. There's a, no, a red line. There's a red line. Okay. And you hear the, the gun... The, the click and the guns. <laughs> and uh, they got one of the guys, I guess he was a sergeant, goes, you touch that red line, I got to kill you. And that was, <laughs> and I'm not, that's a true story. And that was because of the B-1 bombs. No one knew what they were. or you know, And uh, it was like top secret. But they were serious. They were not fucking around. Right. You know, And then on the way back, uh, and I'll get into the inside part in the, at the, in the next, uh, Everyone, he was fooling around the entire trip, Mike. Practical jokes, all kinds of stuff. We get on the plane, and now instead of having harnesses, we actually had seats. So whatever model plane we had, it had seats for a change. So it was like going back home first class. And uh, he looks out the window. I don't know. He looked out the window. He goes, uh, the plane's on fire. morning and all to our wives and girlfriends. And sure enough, the plane's on fucking fire. <laughs> no. So we stayed an extra two days. We went golfing. We, we had a great – it was worth the effort. Hold on. Wait a minute. The, when you say the plane – the engine was – one engine was on fire, obviously? Yeah. I mean, you didn't go yeah. down, obviously. So no, no, we're, on, we're ready to get to, to, you know, close up and go. And everyone's going like, fuck you, Mike. We're sick and tired. It's <laughs> yeah, That's enough great. Enough. Yeah, man. Boy, that you want to get home. You know <laughs> – then, aha. Aha. Last aha. 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 Taste the soup. I said, taste the soup. Right. What about the spoon? 
They knew they, for some reason we weren't going to leave that night, but they, the, the guys down at Sock Dog were leaving that night. Okay, and we did because of the plane the engine. So Melissa gets there with all the other wives. And she, I don't know how she got here because with, with women, you can't say take exit 33 North. They don't get that. Yeah. They get it. Go make a left at the Sunoco and then make a right at the library. That's They get it differently, the directions. Right. So yeah. I don't know how she even got to Floyd Benefield. So she gets there, and Chief Bullock was in charge of socket. And that was, uh, he had his – that's someone laughing? Or My someone dog. just killed the dog? He killed it? My dog. He oh. stepped on it. Oh, sorry to hear that. <laughs> uh, so anyhow, so – she gets pissed off. No, everyone was pissed off because they kind of knew it wasn't coming in and they told all the wives and girlfriends to come in. So the end result was she said, well, you know what, Chief Bullock? I'm not driving home by myself. I didn't even know how to get here. And guess what? Chief Bullock and his aide drove, followed her or drove her all the way. Really? Yeah. She wearing a thong that night? No. She <laughs> Hey Pete, pull up no, Oklahoma. She's gonna hunt you down. Well, Kevin, she's gonna hunt hey, you down. Uh, just uh, on a heads up from Joe Schneiderman in the uh, in the oh, chat. Oh yes, Joe's a lawyer in Boston. Here's the uh, here's the rescue Ford truck with uh, Spirit of Oklahoma on the side of it. Right, uh, this was uh, he was saying that there were some pictures out there, and here it is. It says Spirit of Oklahoma. I guess it was. It was tracked down at some point, but I wanted to show I that to you. I think that guys. was sent to you guys after 9 11, right? They sent you a rig. Yes. The rig got trashed. Yep. Yep. Oh, so, no, we got so many rigs. I mean, you know, uh, uh, we haven't got to 9 11 yet, so we'll, we'll get there eventually. But, uh, hey, Mike, was Schneiderman yes, Jewish? Of course. Oy. What's going on here? Oy. With all the Jews. Oi. God bless. <laughs> Have a good day. Joe Schneider, uh, thank you. Yes. Mr. Hold on, Mr. I'll be right back. Mr. Uh, John, he's going to get Mr. Another John drink. Paul, hold on, Mr. John Paul in the chat. I'm not nearly as tough as Kev, whose dog it was that he was beating. Not me, buddy. <laughs> talk to <laughs> talk to Kev. <laughs> not me. My dog's asleep right now in bed. Okay. All right. Hey, Pete, do we have any video work. of uh, or pictures of Oklahoma so we can show? Yeah, for sure, about? man. For sure, man. Stand hey, by. Mike, Come do you on. have any pictures or videos of Melissa that you can show? Up <laughs> <laughs> While we're talking about it. While we're Kevin, talking about it. Kevin, let me tell you this. What? She's going to knock on your door one of these days. <laughs> and man, is your wife going to flip out? God damn, I hope she does, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. As long Lord. as she's got like a long trench coat on, maybe, or something. Yeah. Like, you know? <laughs> and a thong underneath, I'm just saying. Thong, the thong, thong. Thong, the thong, thong. Like I said, if it wasn't for her in a lot of ways, I wouldn't be talking to you. So, you know, it is what it is. Hey, you need a good I woman. Think, yeah, you need a good woman, bro. I don't even talk to my ex. We don't even text. We do nothing. So this is, uh, this is yeah. a shot of the scene. Wow. Just to remember. My How God. many people? 100 and something? 67. Wow. Yeah, it was it was tough. I, I remember uh, uh, somewhere up on the upper floors, uh, we had to find a Marine who had been killed there. He was do It was a recruitment center. So Holy we shit. put an American flag. We brought him down. Uh, we got we got sort of a, a bitch slap by uh, the heads of uh, uh, USAR because uh, – uh, hold on for a second. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the story in a second. How many guys did you go out with, Mike? Night, it was, What's that? How many guys did you go out with from the FDNY? Oh, about 18. All from special ops? Yes. That looks just brutal, man. It's crazy. It was even adult. You know what it is? A lot of kids died then too, brother. Yes. Had a that guy was an animal. Center. Yep. Guy was center. Animal. How how long after that? What so so what, on the day that it happened, <laughs> you guys were out there how long after? A couple days after, two days, one day to five days. Well, we got there the day after, and uh, that night we, we had the the, the uh we had the we got the day ship. What happened? Uh I'm trying to think of Steve's last name. He's still on the job. He's a chief, and he was an engineer. I can't think of Steve's last name. Of course, I, I forget. Uh, I'm trying to see if I have his number. Spall? I, I Steve, Steve Spall? Steve yes. Spall? Yep. Yes. Great guy. The engineer yeah. guru. Yeah. And it, so it was a rainy night, and there was a big slab that was hanging on by rebar at its best at that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it was a Wednesday night. 
And I, I think there was a lot of political crap going on. I think the guy, and I don't care if they don't like me anymore because I really don't give a rat's ass. So I'll tell it like it is. Uh, I think there were certain guys in certain departments, and I'm not going to mention names because I want to be fair, that thought they were better than New York City. Okay. Uh, we've been across the ocean. We do this and that. And the, uh, matter of fact, some, some of these departments, I don't think they ever had an earthquake or a building collapse in all their fucking lives, but yeah. they're, they're in charge. Okay, got it. Got I it. love when you hold back, it. Mike. I love it. So we're there, and it's a pouring night. And, you know, he, Stephen asked me, Mike, what do you think? I said, listen, I'm not the brightest guy here, but you know what? When you don't have any friction, you can't hear a building having a problem groaning and if that thing slips we're not going to hear it and we're dead because we were working underneath it so him and ray went to this guy and said okay they pulled us off and then they gave us the uh the night shift to screw us you know like I, I, you know who gives a crap you want to play petty shit all i know is fdmy is the best you can challenge me anytime <laughs> i'll leave it like that okay there's Bias. the big leagues Bias. and there's the little leagues i understand Sorry. I'm we, sorry. Most of the time we feel the same way, but you know, uh, I, I, it's, I'll it's, defend FDM it's pride. Right I got it. It's pride. No okay. doubt. Absolutely. Yeah, we're pretty humble guys, to be, to be honest. So that's what happened there. And then, you know, uh, it, it was a great experience. The people of Oklahoma were great. I had pro, uh, uh, prairie oysters for the first time. I don't know if you know what those are. No. Yeah. The cowboys. Uh, bull bull testicles. Like, yeah. yeah. They're like oysters. But they're in they're Oklahoma, bro. Come on. They're delicious. Like, like uh, Chevy Chase and lamb fries. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they're delicious, Kevin. They really are. You know, you, yeah. you know, you gotta, you know. Sorry, the moose out starts have told you. Hey, Mike, let me ask you a question. <laughs> First time you've had balls in your mouth? I'm just <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just want to know. No, 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 I've no, never no, done this before. Not, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> we were coming back from the Rockaways. Now, Doug Sloan. Leave, Leave me alone. Doug Sloan. Now, this was our old, I think, the RMAC which we had the engine, then the cab, and then you could see the asphalt as we drove down to the core. That's how old and rotted it was. So I'm on the back of the rig, and I'm trying to get a little sleep. We're in the Rockaways. Well, you know, so we're shaking, and I had my hands like this. You know, palms <laughs> up. I'm sleeping, and all of a sudden, I feel something a little clammy and wet in my hand. You're old, So lady. Doug Sloan was always going to be a funny guy. He had his penis in my hand. Oh, no! Man. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Ain't nobody got time for that. that. <laughs> the fuck is so, you that? Know, this, no. it is Mike, I'm, it is. I'm starting. You know, maybe you know, you know, you know, you never know what could happen. You never know. You know, hey, he's he's open. Open. you're he's on a he's long open. trip. You know what I'm he's saying? He's, trip. he's uh... one thing I do know. I keep my mouth shut when I'm sleeping. That's all I do. That's, <laughs> all right, that, that's without a doubt. All right? Good move. I Good taste move, something kid. salty. I don't know what that could be. Yeah. Um, actually, there's one good question in here. I've done, and 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 it, believe it or not, the guy's name in the chat is Oive. He's oh, asking, nice. any advice to a Jewish candidate expected in the next Pro B class? <laughs> good question. Wear your yarmulke underneath your helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Say well, Oive as many times as you possibly can. It, 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 this is what What I would do. Okay. Fucking, Johnny, too. It's just if a tip, I, Mike. This, this is a legitimate <laughs> question. And it may be. There's a lot of, a lot of Jewish shit. kids that don't stuff. They don't uh, stuff. My face hurts. Oh. Uh, what, I, what I would suggest <laughs> yeah. is, uh, and I, I made a, a, a little of a mistake. It wasn't done intentionally, and what was done to me wasn't done intentionally. But I put filter fish, some salad. Oy! Hey, Are a you little creepy. Gefilte fish. Firehouse. Evan King coming in shit hot saying, yeah, don't tell anyone you're Jewish. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is that the Evan King from 140 truck? I'm going to find out. Evan King, are you the 140 so anyway, truck? So just... Go, Mike. The end of the story was I brought the meal in, and I can't think of the guy's name from 55 truck. He's on a detail. And he, he did it. He's an Irish guy. Had a brogue. He slaps on mustard on the gefilte fish. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So all I can say is, if that happens to this kid, just go with the flow. Go just with it. Screw it. It don't it matter. Does. Nothing matters. No, it, it doesn't matter. matter. If oh. they're doing it, to, listen. If they're doing it to you, they love you. That's the bottom that, line. I agree. I, I agree. agree. Cone of silence. 
Man, you did something there. Listen, the, the fact that you're able to do what you're, you know, that you're able to take any type of ribbing, no matter what it is, whether it's your, you know, whatever it is, your hair, your body, your ethnicity, whatever it is, you just take right. it. That's part yeah. of the whole, that's the oh, best yeah. part of everything. It really yeah. is the best part, you know, oh, no absolutely. matter what. Absolutely. Hey, so, Mike, do you have any hair tips before we close it out? Anything? <laughs> 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 well, I, I did learn from a hairdresser, don't wash your hair every day. Really? Yes, because you lose the oils. Earl. That's not, that's not going to guarantee, Kevin, that your hair's going to grow back. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, I know, I know. Uh, boo. Uh, Mr. Kev, uh, what? speaking of tips, don't we have a new segment? We do uh, have a new segment. We have a new segment. Mike, and it has nothing to do with Mike's robe. Uh, it has uh, <laughs> everything to do with... The old, school. old school. Old school. Wow! Old I like school that. tip of the day. I like the I like the intro, bro. Yeah, this I, is going to be a new segment. Martha. New. This segment. is a new. This is a new segment we're going to do with our guests who okay. uh, have this knowledge rummaging around in their head, bro. A tip of the day it could be the smallest thing to the biggest thing. Mike, you're on. And okay, my tip of the day to do with thongs. Go. No. <laughs> my tip of the day would be uh, I I guess I learned the best tips in the truck because you have more than a, I'll give you two tips. Let me do two tips if you don't want no, on the first day you're gonna give us two. Okay, go with it. I'll, I'll do it this way. <laughs> if you're in the engine, do ne never let yourself be caught between the wall and the line. Never. Mm. That's a no no. Always be on the outside. I like it. I like okay, that. Okay, because whether the water pressure changes or the angle of the attack changes and the hose goes around a corner, you don't want to be pinned against the wall. Now you're vulnerable. Number two, I suggest, I don't care what anybody tells you, I bring a can when I was working and a hook every job, no matter what the fuck it was. No matter Off what. Iron, Elevator. Can't... Absolutely. Elevator, and I'll tell you why. It solves a lot of problems. It's a chalk. It's an extinguisher. It gives guys some time to go in there, make a, a quick search. You can hose the top of the, the, the hot air, keep it a little cool. Guy can get out and it, that's use it as a, a way to get out of a, a, wind, a, 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 a building, break a window. It, so, it serves a lot of multi-purposes, and I think it's a lost thought. No one really teaches it because I think a lot of people – Really don't know how to use a can properly. I like it. I like it, kid. Mike, you are the first tip of the day, old school tip of the day. You should be proud, bro. And those are two great tips. Hey, Mike, I just want, I want to say, if you yes. next time you come on, if we, if we do have you on with the part oh, two. Oh, we're going to have him on today. Yeah. I, I see you got to have, if you wear two. the robe. You got to have a gold, like a gold chain or something, uh, you know, this, like with the, I will, the, the uh, Jewish cross or something, you uh, know. Like, Jewish you know, cross. I, I, I please, will, it's the Star of David. Get oh, it right. Oh, right. Oh, I'm the, better, the, listen, the better half. Better half. <laughs> if you have me on again, listen, I have tons of stories. Now, there are, some of them are a little bit exaggerated. No, uh, no, no, come on. But they're all basically true. And, uh, you know, listen, I uh, all I can <laughs> say is, it's it's the best job anybody in America could ever have. I mean, I, you know, it, that's just the bottom line. It, it's a great job. I met so many great friends that I still hang out with, talk to. I mean, I stay in Long Island because you know what? Uh, I need some uh, backup once in a while because I have PTSD. So you know what? To have a bunch of guys that know what you're talking about, it's important. Now, one more thing before we go. Here's another tip. I hope to. Brothers in FDNY. Oh, hold on oh. a minute. Hold on a minute. Give another one, Pete. Another old school <laughs> tip of the day. I just feel like it's King Arthur. I feel like I feel like I want to carry a sword or something. Here's Don't another it. tip, and I'm a big believer in mental health awareness. Uh, based on the Covina virus and everything that's been going oh, on. Oh, we I can't say I'm, that. No, I'm well, I'm going to say it. Say it. I, okay. I, what I think what FDNY has to do, they got to put a little more effort and money into having people. And I know Charlie Wagner and Fort Totten does it and a few others. But they got to get these guys into the EMS houses, into firehouses on a more routine basis to talk about the fact 
that there's help out there. We just had a recent guy die, committed suicide. Was it avoidable? Who knows? Maybe not. But we have to, as a, as a, as a brotherhood, sisterhood, get more people out there, whether they volunteer with Nine Metro Tech or with the health counseling units at Fort Tott and Comac at Staten Island, upstate New York, Orange. We got to get more people involved as peer counselors to go to these firehouses, EMS houses, and just let it out. Hey, listen, there's help out there, guys. You, have to, you don't have to do it today, but it's out there. There's, a, there's availability to make it work for you. So I, I just hope that after this COVID-19 virus moves on, that we reevaluate like we did with 9-11 to get more mental health experts out there because, God damn it, we need it. Mm. Uh, a martini kicking the dog is not the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hurt. Kev. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> but you get my drift, guys. I mean, that's what we got to do. And I, I, I hope with your uh, uh, ability, with the ability pulpit, for no better word, that – a lot of guys and girls watching today can go back to their departments, whether it's volunteer or paid, and say, you know what, we really need to spend more money. This is a big deal. Because uh, you know, once you've got a problem, mm. it doesn't go away. You can manage it. It doesn't leave you. Mm. That's what we have to do. That's my other thing. I like your style, Mikey. I like your style, Mikey. Good hey, job. Hey, Mike, before I, I just saw something in the chat. Garrett Lindgren? You know, I, I see him yes, on uh, guy. Yeah, yeah, awesome guy, long time, old school. He was talking, uh, he mentioned something in the chat about Dan, uh, Dan O and uh, Jim Trainer, right? Those are some old style guys. No, uh, I Hank, have a great story about Jim. Two quick stories. Jim, nice we had guy. Side, like you four. Great we guy. had the side windows. Now, Jim didn't like anybody. I didn't care what color you Trainer? were. Trainer? Yeah. I he, remember him from 9 11. Great yeah, guy. I remember him. Great guy. You know, Fuck these guys, fuck that guy. Every time he passed the church on a way to a run, he's doing this. You know, yeah. like, what the hell? You just cursed me out. Now you're doing the sign. Sacrilege. The what are you doing? doing then one story with Paul Heglin and Dano, and I'll let you guys go. Heglin, yeah, yeah, Paul. I know yeah, you're talking. getting bored with my stories, but. Uh, no, not at all, bro. Uh, Dano was a hunter, like his brother, Paul. Yeah, both. that's how I know both of them. because But I'm I'll tell you myself. one thing about Dano. On two occasions, once at the the firehouse and once out on the island i called him and he told me where to take i had these exotic birds that were either stressed out they were injured he knew hey go to see this lady in forest hills go see this lady in lloyd harbor they're gonna help you out and he was spot on but one night day uh paul was the officer of course dana was his chauffeur and uh that's a great story uh, we're, we're driving and we pull over on the cross side you had those little cutoffs yeah, 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 by, yeah. By, by yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Yep. By the marina. Yeah. So we pull over, and then and we had the, an open uh, uh, setup between the front cab and the rear. So I had I was watching with another. I don't know who else was watching with me. And there's Paul and Dano. They got this the field glasses out. <laughs> hey, Dano, there's a red wobbler. Oh, oh no, no, there's a red goose. And they're like, everybody's they're looking at the, everybody's looking at the ash jogging by. They're looking at, yeah, uh, they're yeah, looking they're at checking out nature. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Holy yeah. shit! You guys don't know Dano passed away, right, bro? So uh, yeah, uh, let's give a little. Let's give uh, a little you know what? Dano. Uh, yeah, cheers. Uh, he uh, he had a tough time. I mean, uh, you know, uh, these cancers are just violent, virulent. Uh, so I mean, all uh, these guys. I, they're all heroes. I mean, mm. to, to just even want to experiment with some of these drugs, give these kids and guys credit. I mean, you're asking a lot. They're already hurting, and they're willing to experiment with their bodies. These guys got my hat. Uh, tip off. Oh, they're great guys. Nice. Yeah, that was, uh, I'm glad he put that in there because those two guys. Uh, Quickie yeah. was another guy. Quick was just a quick uh you know, another guy. that He came to 288. You know, he was one of those guys. Me and Kevin say all the time, you know, you know, the heart of a lion, he would do anything. And if I had to pick a guy to come get me, he was the guy. You know well, what I mean? You're 100% right. A quick had his issues. We all do. Uh, but uh, Glenn Harris. Same thing, right? And uh, 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 Billy Quick. Either I mean, one of them. I mean, listen, <laughs> McTeague was on his deathbed. Continue with the charges. Yep. So, so, but putting that aside, Glenn Harris and Billy Quick. Either one of those guys. If those are two guys that 
I don't care if it was a solid wall of red fire. They, they go in and get your ass out of there. Dude, if, you, if I was trapped and they said Glenn's coming for you or Billy's coming for you, I would, yeah. I would, yeah, I would take a deep breath because yeah. I knew they were coming. I knew they absolutely. would be there. And I just want to say one thing. You asked me about a great boss. Uh, include uh, uh, Brian Hickey. Oh, I've great worked with him a few times. Great, great guy. guy. Yes. Okay. Just uh, a, 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 a great guy. I mean, uh, I, I don't think, do you know that when he did that movie? Uh, that was Brothers in Battle. Yeah. His aunt, his father's sister, May Wynn, was a movie star in Hollywood. Is that right? I didn't know that. He worked with uh, Randall Scott, Glenn Ford, uh, Bogart, a whole bunch yeah. of guys. No shit. Now, when Ray's, uh, uh, when Brian's father uh, father died, I went to the, the funeral. So, and uh, this was about five years ago. Uh, so, and she's still alive. She's got to be in her nineties. She was married to a guy from Maverick, uh, uh, not uh, uh, James Garner, the other guy. Uh, and uh, she was being goose. Who? <laughs> goose. <laughs> I don't know. But anyhow, so she comes out of the church. Goose. She gets into this big black suburban uh, limo. I, I go to the, the passenger side of the driver's seats, and it's it's one of Brian's nieces. Can I talk to May for a second? Yeah, sure. I, I I don't know. Let me ask. Window goes back up. The black window behind her comes down, and it's, and it's May May or May win. I may win. I, I watch you on TCM all the time. You're great. I, I you know. I, I know you. You know, I know Ray very well. I worked with Ray, uh, Ray Junior. Who Ray Junior was a great. He got Emmys for, uh, for NBC as a, a sports photographer. Mm -hmm. so this, this family had talent. So anyway, so I'm talking to May uh, Win, and I'm we're talking about. Hey, said so you worked with Glenn Ford, didn't you? Yeah, that guy was an asshole. <laughs> and then she tells me the story. You know what? He had told me where my mark was, and man, I was a professional. I didn't need his ass telling me where my mark was. So there's just all these great little tidbits about people that you don't know. Yeah, right, 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 right. With you. Yeah, right. I got you. You just don't know. It's yeah. true. It is true. Yeah, I mean, yeah. doing this show, we find out so many things just, uh, yeah. you know, from the guys. It just keeps, yeah. you know, it's amazing what popping up is out there yeah. that you don't even know about. And I, I still see Glenn Harris because he lives by me in Long Beach. <laughs> I think he just dead. retired. I think yeah, he just retired. I can't believe he retired. Finally. Right, yeah. right, right. I, I see him in the bank all the time in Long Beach, bro. And uh, I know him right away because, you know, like I said all the time about Quick and Harris, bro. If, if, if I was in trouble, I'd want them to come for me. But nine yep. times out of ten, the reason they, I'm in trouble. They got you in that spot. They got me in that spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that, yeah, that's true. You know what? It's funny you said that. I got one, another story. Judge, uh, 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 let me take it. We had this guy, Jack Duggan, uh, rescue three guy, came to rescue four as a lieutenant. He uh, knew Hebrew. He knew Spanish. He knew, this guy was a Navy guy. He, every port he went to, he learned the language. So a couple of times we had synagogue fires, and, and then the, the rabbi would be talking, and he'd be going, uh, Rabbi, you want me to do this? And the rabbi would be looking at him like, you know Hebrew? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, Jack was as Irish as you can be. But anyway, so we, we were at a call, uh, a movie fire in uh, Jamaica. So Billy and I go up to the projection room, and it's, it's, it's basically raw. Okay, and, and, and those are dangerous places to be in a, a, a huge area, open area, yep. space, and it, you could get lost in those places very easily between the seats, the side rooms, and all that. So Billy goes, uh, quick to rescue four, I need a line. <laughs> that, that's yeah. silence. That's silence. Uh, quick to rescue four, I need a line. That silence. And, uh, I go on to help uh, rescue. No one to rescue four, I need a line up here. Okay, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it, 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 all these things happen, you know, you know. Uh, you know, Billy was a great guy. He was just hard to get along with sometimes. Yeah. That's all. I mean, we all have personalities. I'm, was I perfect? You know, a lot of guys yeah, didn't yeah, like yeah, me. Yeah. That's for sure. So uh, it is what it is. He he was one of my favorite guys. Uh, I learned a lot from him. But in two oh, no, 
He was smart. He had a, 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 a like a museum in his home. Like Mike, he got lifted. He got lifted. When I was in probie school, he was teaching probie school because he got lifted because he did something where he took the rig to like Arthur Avenue or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, he did in Astoria, when they shit. went to the Rock, he took the rig to Astoria to go get something to eat. <laughs> yes, I was there. Yeah. That. Yeah. He did that in Rescue Four. Yes, took the rig, and I think Hat was the boss. I'm, at, I'm training like a moron with everybody else, and he leaves. Right, he yeah. left, and then and then I found out about that because he was like, uh, you know, when we were running into that stupid building, we had the gas fired. Uh, you know, when we were learning in school back then, before they started burning shit, right, right, right. and he was there, and uh, then I found that you know he was great, but I found yeah, out about him that? afterwards. Billy Hat. Quick. No, Hat was the boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Hat yeah. was the boss. That's why yeah, he got right, right, right. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yep. But he went back to four then after that, right? Yeah, but no, he eventually got lifted back to the Rockaways, and then he came to the squad. Then he got he came to two eighty eight, then he got lifted out of there. He went to, to the Rockaways again. I, I, Louis and Kevin, Pete. The reason I survived pretty well unscathed, I didn't get involved in the politics. I stayed out of it. Mm. I had nothing to do with it. I didn't want to know about it. I didn't care about the overtime or this guy had a special this and that. I didn't want to deal with it. You know why? And when I didn't deal with it, I got everything I needed. And then some, because mm. I wasn't political. Yeah, Garrett. Garrett is saying I taught probably school with Billy Quick. He took off from teaching to work in Rescue Four the day that that happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's and, Billy. and Ray Sealy said the same thing. The company was yeah. at the Rock, if I remember that right. Right. All right. All right. All right we got to wrap this up, Pete. We got to wrap it up. Yeah. Well, you only have two hours. I told you it was going to go fast, Mikey. <laughs> Listen yeah, here. Guys that were watching, bro, Evan King, I haven't heard you from a while, bro. I hope you're doing well and all the other guys. A lot of Rescue Four guys today. A lot of Rescue Four guys on there. Uh, and listen, I, like I said, uh, to meet you guys, well, I, I know Kevin and uh, Louie, no problem. Uh, it, let, let me tell you something. It, it, this is an honor. Uh, I think you, you're going in the right direction because uh, you, you got to have the humor with the sorrow and the hurt. Right. If we're going to talk about FDIC and Firehouse where you just stretch lines and you got to know how to lead your troops, and all that like, shit come on. Right. It doesn't yeah. work that way. I don't care who you are. Mike, we're going to have you back on only if you come with that hair and the and the, you have to roll. <laughs> but you got to have a gold chain. A follicles, but I'll be there. And bring the uh, thong. We're going to have my... <laughs> Mike uh, listen, if I can you. listen to show I up, and she might. You're Holy in trouble, shit, bro. She comes on. I love it. Oh, man. On. You're, 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 I'll have you on you're, next you're, Thursday. <laughs> that might be the top-rated show ever. Let me tell you something, Kevin. You're proud of if she comes on. That would be I, great. I love it. I love it. Beat me up. Bring her right. on, bro. Next, I'll have I you on I love you guys. Thursday. Be safe. Pete, I love you, too. Thanks. Love you, too, brother. Mike, hang in. Hang all set up. Thank you. Hang hang in, man. Take us out, Edmund, man. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if any of you guys notice, but there is a United We Stand shirt that Mr. Oh, Kevin is wearing oh, as we bro. speak. Check it out. COVID-19, United We the Stand. The shameless bro. plug, Mike. The shameless plug. That's go. right. And you guys can all get that, of course, at gettingsaltyapparel.com. And guys, to find out about who our next guests are, what surprise videos we have coming, speaking of best job in the world, that's all I'm going to say. Surprise videos we have coming. Go to Instagram, of course, and check us out at Salty Dog Inc. And last but not least, for all you audio listeners out there right now, go to youtube.com forward slash getting salty experience and please give us the finger. Come on, Mike, give us the Mike, finger. Mike, subscribe. We got it. Subscribe. Listen, let me just explain this to the crew and everyone listening. Guys, we love the fact that you're so active in the chat. We see the same names over and over. I can almost recite them from. Memory at this point, Dan Wilson Jr., Ben Cote, Gareth Duays, and the rest of you crew. Guys, we love you. Thank you so much. Please share this video. Like, subscribe it because it'll give us the opportunity to come out to Houston, to come out to Boston. We already have a plan for coming out to Myrtle Beach. We want to meet everybody out there. We want to do spotlights on all of your firehouses. We want to tell the story of firefighters in the United States and around the world. Um, we think it's a worthy story. So the more you like, subscribe, and share, the more that we could do that. Great move. I got I got two things I just want to say. I want to show on Monday, bro. What do we got? All right. So Monday? we got uh Captain Dan Dwyer from the Atlanta uh fire department, the guy who got lifted uh for actually going into a fire. 
So yes. uh, he's actually yeah. going to be on. Looks like he's moving over uh, shortly to a different fire department, or if he's already there, I think he started working already. So I spoke to him the other day. He's going to be on on Monday, giving you the straight skinny. And yes. I also want to say, give a shout out to Dan and Rob from the Minster Fire Department. Spoke to them yesterday. Oh. They told me, uh, you know, make sure I give them a shout out. Uh, so I wanted to say hello to those guys. Uh, they ordered some stuff and uh, I was able to talk to them yesterday. So. Awesome story. I want to give a shout out. I saw some guy coming across, James Mondello, who was an EMT guy. When I got on the job, actually, we were the first class to do CFR. And James Mondello was a guy teaching the CFR portion of it and CPR. And he used to say, love dub, love dub. That's the heart going. Love dub, love dub. So James Mondello. All right. Nice. Rest in peace, brother. I saw that shout out. We give him a also, shout out. Also, Dave Wintrup. Uh, who else we got? Garrett. We got uh, John Gain, Johnny Two, all Johnny the guys that came Gain out from Rescue Four. House. Johnny Gain, love it. So uh, thanks for coming out. All right, Mike, boys. You know that. You know what we here, say. Mike. Mike, great time. Mike, love you, bro. Thanks, thanks for, coming for coming on. Coming on in the bathrobe. <laughs> it was an honor, gentlemen. <laughs> thanks. It was our honor. Yeah, bro. We'll have you on again. Uh, because you have so many more stories. We'll have I'm you sure on. We, got a lot of, we didn't even touch on half of the stuff. Yeah, we got oh, Hank Malay coming back on. Beautiful. Oh, man, Malay. Uh, we have plenty of guys. Dennis Gordon on. is coming on uh, next Gordon Thursday. Next week. We God, have, uh, another Jew. What's oh, going hey, on? I love the Jews. We got uh, Hold on. Hold on. One more One time. Last time. Hey. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Bring it out, Pete. Listen to me, guys. Check us out. We got a lot more shit coming up. Stay low and go. Until the next time, Monday night, we have a follow up on our two cents with the guy from Atlanta. Stay low and go, bro. Mike, thanks for coming on, brother. See you at the big one, boys. Mike. Be safe. I love you all. Love you too, brother. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>